<clears throat> so we got two quarterbacks starting. Hello, on. hello, hello. Okay. We, we have two quarterbacks starting. Um, we'll have to determine which one's the actual quarterback. Gotcha. He's probably just playing in every position, like a wideout or something. Yeah, the Delando Tucker is the other one. Are you talking for? Uh, yeah, for Rodgers, I've got um, Grayson Madlin, number 12, starting. Oh, okay. So he's probably going to be a run. Well, so there you go. Back up. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. And Van Horn will be the starter. Yeah. So. All right. So back to finishing this off. Okay. Let me get out my. Uh, I got my trusty stat sheet ready to go. Okay. I was like, I just lost sound. I lost everything for a second there. I think it's when that thing goes, like uh, the screensaver or whatever. Oh, yeah. To you, Malu. Number 70. So you're going to cue me in 5-4 I can, or just? I can hold that if you need me to. Right. Our being presented by the Fenway High School Honor Guard, which was commanded by the recent graduate of Fenway High School and current Air Force Airman First Class, Marciano Quinones. The other Honor Guard members are Airman Teddy Paquette and Fenway High School Junior ROTC Cadets Jeremy McMahon, Aristotle Toyko. We ask that you please remain standing until the Honor Guard departs the field. So is, it, is this done live? Okay. What was the answer to that? Yes. What? Mm -hmm. I don't want to, probably. I hate listening to myself, even though it makes you better. Great way to make a girlfriend break up yeah. with you. <laughs> Luckily, I'm married. There's going to be a moment of silence, I think. You want me to just go into that moment of silence? Or can you hear me all right in the, in the horns? You No feedback for you, huh? No, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, if you need me to modulate, just let me know. Otherwise, you're probably going to do it on your Behringer, aren't you? Hello and welcome everybody to Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com. It's the PlayOnSports.com pregame show live 
from Federal Way Memorial Stadium in the city of Federal Way, Washington. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom Smith. I'll be your play-by-play announcer along with Scott Eklund, our color analyst. Welcome to the broadcast, Eric. A lot of tingling excitement as we get set to kick off the football season here at Federal Way. Fourth-ranked Eagles taking on a Roger squad, trying to climb up from midway on the SPSL South table from last year. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you have Rogers up here trying to trying to get themselves up to the top upper echelon, like you mentioned, but also Federal Way, which is one of the strongest teams and strongest programs right now in the South Sound area and, and a team that, that's ranked number four in the state, just a an impressive team up and down their roster with lots of athletes. A lot of storylines. You talk about the South Puget Sound League, the South and the North at the top, always strong teams in contention. A little bit of disappointment last year as the SPSL had one of their teams knocked out after only the first round. But we've got to mention some of the other schools who kicked off the weekend here, the long Labor Day weekend, especially Bellevue, who had a Trinity, Texas team come up and uh, enjoy a little hospitality from Washington. As we get set to get underway, though, we got to focus on the game right here. Take a look at some of the players that will jump out at the roster for you as the Eagles will are set to kick off left to right on your video screen. Uh, Rainier is visible on a beautiful Friday evening, so they're kicking off to the south. And their Rogers Rams will receive just two yards in. Galloping up the right-hand side, it's LeGrant Pegram, and he's handled inside the 20 as the Rams will set up shop. First and 10 at their own 15-yard line. Great coverage there by the Eagles. Got down real quick and made the sure tackle right away. Austin Hart and Andrew Nelson will be your starting running back. Stephen Van Horn will start a quarterback. He's going to have a lot of help off the bench from Grayson Madlin as they want to use him in lots and lots of ways. Also wide receiver Zach Monk and LeGrant Pegram, along with the tight end Matt Milkett. And you're pretty high on him, aren't you, Eric? Uh, yes, I, I am very, very high on him, and, and I, I do like him. He, he didn't get a lot of playing time last year, so this is the year for him to really show because he is a senior, but he's 6'4", 220 pounds, very athletic, saw him at several different camps this summer. Rams offense breaks the huddle from inside the outside bound lines, run into the field, are ready to go here for the first down play. Van Horn bounces one in front of the slipping receiver, Austin Harden intended, Scott. Not a great way to start, but at least a no turnover. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, they, they come up and they, they pressed right away and because Federal Way has so many athletes in their secondary, and they can come up and press guys and, and, and sit on routes. It looks like we have a penalty here, a legal man downfield, so that's going to take Rodgers back and put him in a first and long situation. But, uh, you know, Federal Way is really going to come up and press and challenge the Rogers receivers very early in this game to see what they can get out of it. Well, we'll give our new viewers here at WIAA Network a chance to kind of get oriented. First game of the season, an intricate sport, team sport like football, you're going to see a few flags out there. And uh, the yellow hankies will be adorning the field, and we'll try to guide you through on that aspect of it. Number six, uh, Rod Jones Jr. in coverage there. On the intended receiver, Austin Harden. And Van Horn surveys now, stepping back into the sun just a little bit at each end of the field, operating at first and 15 deep on the south end of Federal Way Memorial Stadium. Slot receivers both sides. The shotgun handoff inside. It gets back to near the 10-yard line, but that Eagles defense swarms to hold them for two. Yeah, good penetration inside there. Mostly from uh, J.T. Tiuli, uh, big 6'3", 295-pound junior for the Eagles, who's going to be a big-time recruit next year as a senior. Trips left now for Van Horn is a obvious passing down, but he's got to be careful deep in his own end. Federway playing aggressively. The inside handoff going outside. A little bit of coverage. The deke move by Andrew Nelson and one of the captains for Rodgers. Gets some positive yardage after going nowhere Second down now, they get near to that 15-yard line. Yeah, still looking at third and about 12 yards to go, 11 yards to go. So th- this is not a situation where you want to be in if you're Rodgers because it allows the Eagles just to pin their ears back and really get after it and have some of those guys like Albert Havili, Rod Jones, J.T. Tiuli to really come up and pressure uh, Van Horn. Third and 11 from the 14. And the crowd having no problem getting into the thick of it here. Van Horn rolls right, spots his receiver, and falling down with it, Trevor Merritt, shy of the first down by a couple of yards. 
Is that a hanky I see over there near the uh, tackle? See here, this could be a late hit. Well, McNeil wrapped him up, but already with his knee on the ground, yeah. the play dead. Depends on the whistle. And these referees have to be ready to start off the season, too. They seem sharp today. Yeah, and it looks like uh, pass interference or illegal use of the hands. So they'll mark oh, no. off another 10 yards or 15 personal foul caliber, yep. and that'll march the Rams all the way up to their own 39-yard line. And if you're an Eagles fan, you're not happy about that. But for the Rams, so deep in their own territory, after that first penalty, now getting a breather here, operating from the middle of the field. Let's see how Fan Horn can exploit this situation. Yeah, obviously it's very good for them getting out of their own end, getting it up near uh, midfield now, and and just looking like they can actually get some momentum here going. They have a lot more plays. Shotgun again, hand off on the inside, staying on the ground. Austin Harden piling up the Eagles, but a gain of three across the 40 to the 41. And Albert Havili in there, you're going to hear his name called a lot tonight. Havili and his brother. As the crew looks over to the signal from Coach Gene Bowen, seeing more and more of this down at the high school level, a sophisticated call it what you will. Van Horn flushed out, rolls left, tough throw to make, and right on his back. No flag going, though, as Brandon Warren right there forcing that tough catch to make no matter yeah, what. Yeah, looked like he got there a little bit before the ball came and hit the, hit the man, but... Uh, was able to not get the call and, and uh, going to force it into another third and long situation, third and eight. For Federal Way, Delonda Tucker, number three. He's one of the athletes we've circled coming into tonight's game. He'll be one of the cornerbacks flushed up in the line. Keeping an eye on number nine, LeGrant Pengram. We'll highlight him and Van Horn, maybe trying to see if we can throw him down the left side, fly pad at the very least, open up this Federal Way defense. And he rolls, ducks, play action if you will. The screen is flushed out. Looks and hauls down the left-hand side. And right there, Delando Tucker. Oh, he was ahead of the ball. And LeGrant Pegram not able to bring it down. And Pegram had a great shot at bringing that down. Tucker actually went to make a play on the ball, missed it. And uh, Pegram just wasn't able to come down with it. Well, brings up fourth and eight. So operating from just over their own 41. The Brain Trust says we're going to go for the punt from the midfield, not like the uh, opponent and the UW, where the coach for the San Diego Aztecs have said, we're going to not punt if we're over across the 50. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that works out tomorrow. Everyone's <laughs> doubting him. We'll see. We'll see. It's an interesting theory, isn't it? At the 32-yard line to receive the punt that's put up high by Zach Monk, and it bounces at 38 back towards the Rodgers across the 40 and down right there at the 40-yard line. So a little bit of progress by Rodgers. Now they go on defense, and we get a chance to take a look at the starters for the Federal A Eagles. Starting at quarterback will be Evan Elliott. But we're a lot of excitement for the wide receivers, Marcel Morris and Delando Tucker now playing both ways. Mike Tate, number four, another good athlete, but it's going to be Zeke McNeil and Rod Jones Jr. in the running back formation. Let's go ahead and give you the lines. As uh, Jared Pulu, Eric Afua, Albert Havili, and Winston Havili, the two brothers, both seniors, but not twins. Also in the offensive line, David Tiumalu. And as, as you can kind of hear in the background here, they're, they're talking about the young man who lost his life, drowned in uh, drowning uh, recently, member of the football team. So uh, talking to Coach Maher beforehand, it's hard for him to hold it together, but he says it's okay because football is a game of emotion. And you can see all the players on the field, as well as the sideline, and many of the students holding their finger to the sky as they acknowledge the caliber of human being this person was. Not just a great athlete, captain of the freshman team that went undefeated last year, Scott, but also somebody as an outstanding scholar and just always had a smile on his face, Coach Mars said. Yeah, yeah. Very upbeat. Heard a lot of good things about him from people down on the sidelines before the game. And there are the officials by prearrangement will throw the flag. 
for a delay of game penalty the coach knew he would have to take. And they said, listen, no win, no season is worth it. I've been a coach 18 years, and I've been lucky to only have this be my first time to lose a young man. Losing any young athlete, student, is going to be different. And to lose Tope, tough on everybody here, and it's just going to give them an extra period. So taking that five-yard penalty, the Eagles are going to start at their own 35. And you know what? Showing a lot of class. How do you help the young guys who miss their, their friend, their student, here at Federal Way? Because there's a lot of kids right now having a hard time holding it in. So in formation, the handoff up the middle. Rodgers get back to the football game and slam him for a one-yard loss. Uh, actually, might only be a half a yard by the time they mark it up. So a bit of an unusual start here for Federal Way. Fourth-ranked team that is again picked by the coaches to top the crowd here in the south end of the SPSL. Yeah, very talented team. Loaded up front, a lot of size, a lot of athletes on the, out, on the perimeter. They're, they're a team that, that, from a talent standpoint, is about as loaded as the, there is in the state. Lakes would probably be another one that's com comparable to them. In motion is Tucker. Ducking and running. Evan Elliott on the left-hand side, and just a little late coming out of his pattern. He overthrows Rod Jones, Jr. Third down and 15 for Federal Way. So both teams kind of sorting things out in their first real live action. Third and 15 coming up. We'll see what they do. I, I'm always a big fan of getting your the ball into the hands of your playmakers. And, Absolutely. And uh, there's quite a few on this team, but I'm surprised that Chico McClatcher hasn't got more of a look this early in the game. Last year showed to be a pretty good freshman. Thought he'd see more action right away. Averaging 220 yards as a varsity player last year. Long haul down the field. Evan Elliott wide open. Marcel Morris. And he's collected inside the 20, dropped at the 17 by number seven, Devon Chavis. And, well, they aired it out and got into the hands of the good guy, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. And that was a nice 43-yard gain right there, something that they really needed to get, get going. Hey, do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying right now? Tell your school to sign up the Playton, the Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Playonsports.com slash SBP. First and ten in attacking formation. They're in the red zone, and Rogers Rams hold up strong. Run for no gain up the middle. Two-yard gain for Rod Jones. You'll hear his name called a lot. Father Rod Jones Sr. played uh, linebacker for the Huskies back in the, I think, mid-'80s, and uh, pretty good player. In motion, but whistles as Chico McClasher about to get the call that you asked for. And we'll have our second flag on Federal Way, though. We'll have to little asterisk on that one, <laughs> the first real penalty for the squad. That takes a lot of guts as a coach to, to say, hey, we're going we're gonna to take that penalty. And, and the one fortunate thing, they said it no matter where they were, they were going to take that five-yard penalty. But I guess, fortunately for them, they were up <laughs> on the 40. So it was only five yards back from that. Well, if they can convert this drive into pay dirt, that would make it a 65-yard drive. Right now, they're 20 yards away from getting six. Evan Elliott sets the offense right behind him is Zeke Maniel. And he got a slot on the left and the right. In motion again is Chico McClatcher. They hand it off to McNeil. And he gets around one, but he can't elude the rest of the Rams' defense. And the visiting crowd lights up on that one. Good play by the defense. And that is about a one-yard loss. almost Actually, two-yard loss for uh, McNeil on that, that run. So putting well, themselves in another hole, third and 16 now, I think. That's right. They've got it at the 23-yard line, third and 16. Andrew McNeil. Came and made that tackle for the Rams. And now, Chico McClatcher, the only receiver in flanker position. And again, another whistle. So, offensively, Federal Way trying to get all cylinders. Timeout. And they'll take a timeout instead of suffer another loss here. <laughs> they are still in position to get three points. They want to maintain that instead of being marched back after so much progress so far. So, Scott... You played football. You had a chance to go uh, 
to a couple of football schools. First is Central Washington. What's it like to play that first game? You've done all the practicing. You feel great, but certain things just don't work. Every sporting event I ever played in, whether it was football, soccer, basketball, any sporting event that I ever played in, I always felt I wasn't quite like Jim Kelly who liked to throw up before every game, but I always <laughs> felt like I had to. And until you get that first touch, the first time you block somebody, the first time you, catch, you get the ball on your hands or on your feet, whatever it was, until then I always was very nervous. But, you know, as it kind of progresses, I guarantee you these guys, the jitters are all gone. Now they're just out there playing right now because we're about halfway through the, you know, almost halfway through the first quarter, and these guys have done quite a bit of hitting already. Well, the Rodgers Rams have shown up defensively despite that long bomb connecting to uh, Marcel Morris. But for the Eagles, they want to come away with something here. Pressure on the left, a throw out to Mike Tate. He's got some room. He's got some moves. He's across the 15, though. And again, Rodgers, pretty good organization there to contain the wide-open high-octane offense. And out comes the federal way kicker, Kobe Craig. That was well defensed by Rodgers because he had two blockers out in front of him. One of them was uh, the center, Jared Pulu, who you might recognize those names, Andrew Pulu, Jordan yep. Pulu. That yep. It's kind of been a family tradition to have a guy here. He's only a sophomore, I believe, right now. So, uh, But he got out there, got out and got a block, but uh, Tate just wasn't able to pick up enough to get a first down. Well, it's fourth down, so they're going to go for the kick, holding the spot as Delando Tucker. Stretching that leg is Kobe Craig, who's over here kicking into the uh, practice netting. The placement is down. The kick is up. Good solid kick, but it is off to the left. Mount Rainier's gravity may have had an effect there, but the Rogers Rams have got to feel good about themselves as the cheerleaders, the parents, and the students are cheering them for the success on defense. A little discussion there, but they will change the stakes and get the ball over to the Rams operating from the 15-yard line. Actually, they place it there at the 20. So kicking in the end zone, of course, that's a touchback. Are you in favor of the college rules where your kickoff goes in the end zone? If you can knee it down, it goes to the 25 for and, the touchback? And see, I've always been a, in a big fan of just letting the kids play, things like that. I understand exactly why they're doing it. They want to limit the amount of high-impact uh, uh, hits that, that occur on those plays, but Gosh, I mean, you're just taking out such a huge part to a lot of those teams' games. Austin Hart in the backfield, takes the handoff, goes up the middle, gets across the 20-yard line, but not much more. So it's the time for the Eagles now to show up on the defensive side of the ball, see if they can bottle up Rodgers and get themselves the ball back in good position. Number 80, Aaron Persinger, actually came up and made the hit from his free safety position to tackle Harden for just a one-yard gain, and... Uh, Looked really solid, but that's something you can use against him is his aggressiveness if, if down, down the road. The deep safety and a cover one. The excellent opportunity, double team picking up Rodgers, leading receiver LeGrant Pegram so far, and he underthrew Trevor Merritt, running in under coverage, being wide open there. Yeah, he was, and that was a time when they did use the uh, Federal Way Eagles aggressiveness against them, but weren't able to complete the pass. It actually looked like it was tipped at the line by, by uh, the outside linebacker. Van Horn wants that throw back, I'm sure. Take a little more time to make sure he gets it there. Like Russell Wilson in last night's exhibition game, practicing the touch of the ball, airing it out. Some folks are saying that's a, an aspect of his game that could hurt him when they get to the real season. Back Van Horn on third and nine. And again, it's blocked right there in blue. That's right, it's Brendan Warren, the senior Offensive linebacker or defensive linebacker coming in from the outside making a play. Yeah, really got his hands up. If you're not going to make make it in to get the sack on the quarterback, they always say get your hands up so you can keep keep the throwing lanes down. Now remember, the big mark off of 15 yards helped Rodgers get near midfield. This time, Federway stops him. It's three and out. And here comes the punt from Rodgers just outside the five-yard line. Trevor Merritt will try to boot it down. Inside his own 50 is the return man for the Eagles. Uh, by himself. Not a great kick again. It could have been deflected as it bounces inside the 30. Gets a Rodgers Rams favorable roll, and it's finally down outside to the 31-yard line. Not a great fourth down play, but at least it's not back where they were. Yeah, and, and the other thing is Federal Way got a little bit of pressure, and I, I think their punter actually got a little bit nervous and didn't concentrate on his drop. And that's what causes a shank like that. You're the kind of guys you analyze the talent out there, just taking a look at the horses that you got. Rogers' line's going to be a little bit more slight 
in uh, Federal Way, and they're beginning to push it now, put pressure in, and they're able to uh, make something happen in that fourth down punt attempt. And now they're in great position as they mark the ball on the 31. And let's see how quarterback Evan Elliott can go to business here for Federal Way. Motion man gets the ball right-hand side. Good at blocking scheme. He gets through one, two. Breaks a tackle across the 25 to the 20. Shakes another into the five, the 10. And he scores number five. Zeke McNeil gets six. And how about that for a drive? 31 yards to go and a 31-yard run by number five, Zeke McNeil. And just like that, Federal Way on the board. Made several guys miss on that run. Takes it, gets around the edge, makes one guy miss out on the edge, and then just knives in through the other side. Great run. So now, having had a chance to practice the kick earlier, did not get him away with three. Kobe Craig, with his old partner Delando Tucker, the good hands man, will look to convert and take it to 7-0. Hold is down, the kick is up. And this time it's through, and it's 7-0 Federal Way over the Rogers Rams. Well, we'd uh, ask you to break down that uh, drive. <laughs> Only one, one play, play to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it was a very easy drive to break down. And, and honestly, I think what, what uh, Coach Amar likes to do with his team is to really work the edges, work the edges, work the edges, try one up the middle, try one up the middle, and then hit the edge again. Mm -hmm and that way they can use the, their speed to get outside. Well, it was a great job drawing it up. We saw the blocking, but a pretty good job running, too, as he yeah. had to slip through and break a couple of tackles. Hey, folks, with the social media being so hot, you can uh, follow us in that social media world. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us on Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playon dash network. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. And, of course, in the world of links, you go to any one of those places and follow your way to the game you'd like to watch. And, of course, today's game, broadcast stream live, but you can dial it up on demand as well. Show off your favorite player. Relive some of the highlights. Well, you're number fourth ranked Federal Way. You, as a coach, you want to forget about everything and just focus on execution. Now, finally, you're on the board. A little bit of easier breathing. Will Federal Way open things up a bit more? What will we see? The kickoff going deep into the end zone. Of course, it will come out to the 20 on the touchback. So, good job by the kicker, Kobe Craig, who uh, once you allow no return, that's a successful kickoff. Yeah, and in college, uh, you'll see uh, some of the kickers that kick into the end zone. They'll actually get the ball at the 25-yard line. So a lot of teams are going to be doing more of the high kick, but in, co in high school, still the 20-yard line. 6.03 left in the first quarter. A little bit of chess match there as both teams kind of sorted themselves out. The sense now that we're in the thick of it. Love the look of this uh, Federal Way team. We've got so many athletes that are already being recruited, have offers from other uh, from four-year schools, colleges, it's a couple from Pac-12 schools. So uh, Chico McClatcher is going to be a big-time recruit here in a couple years. He's only a sophomore this year. Really good-looking team. Van Horn right back out offensively trying to get something going, and he hands it off to Keenan Curran. Excuse me, that's Andrew Nelson, the other running back. Austin Harden's been featured so far, but they try Nelson to see if they can't surprise Federal Way, who seems to have been well prepared for this Rodgers offense. Actually lost about a half a yard almost, it looks like. Brings up second, and we'll call it 10 yards to go. A long 10. Yep, you got trips to the left, a single receiver on the right. Nelson is right next to quarterback Van Horn. Stepping sets, gets the shotgun, quick drop, and again, Going out flat as a flag drops near the line of scrimmage, but unable to come up with it is LeGrant Pegram. So they're trying to target him, but he's having a hard time coming up with something here. Yeah, and, and on that play, Van Horn threw it right where it needed to be. Yeah, He threw it where Delando Tucker couldn't get his hand on the ball. Pegram just has to come up with that. Well, you're working on that layout. That's almost like a track and field event just to do that. He had great separation from the defender, but it's all about the hands at that point. How do you cradle it in there? and use those soft hands to get a snatch on the ball. 
turns out even if it had been complete, it looks like this penalty is going to go against uh, Rodgers, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But still, that's a play that you need your receivers to make, hey, especially Mark. when he's having to run, run for his life after almost every play. Yeah, it's going to be a holding penalty half the distance to the goal. It's a 10-yard variety, but uh, they get him inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. That will be uh, second and long. Call it 22. Have to get to the 30-yard line. Same set. Slots on either side. The short one, and he connects. Damian Jackson out to the sideline. And there's a positive play by Rodgers. They get half the yardage back. Great drag, shallow drag across the formation to Jackson. He gets it on the move. Van Horn puts it right in stride. He's able to catch it on the move and, and get a good uh, gain out of it. Give him eight yards. It'll be third and 13 from the 16-yard line. Here comes the big rush in his face, down the sideline, and overthrown. The target again was the Grant Pegram, but breathing down the face of Stephen Van Horn was big number 70, David Tiumalu. And uh, good job by the quarterback not to flinch on that one, just to get the ball away and maybe give his receiver a chance to run underneath it. Pretty good coverage there, too, Scott. They had three blue shirts in the area, but anywhere near Pegram, he had a chance to bring that one yeah, down. Yeah, and on that, they played uh, cover three, which sends three guys deep so that they weren't going to get beat deep. And he just threw the ball up for grabs, and it was past everybody who had a chance to make the play. Eric Afua runs off the field to make sure only 11 are defensively. Again, pressure blocked into the kicker, but there is a flag picking it up on the bounce. That's ill-advised at a two-yard return and immediately wrapped up by Kane Du. But let's see. As they spot the ball at the 45, what the uh, yellow hankies about it will be roughing the kicker. <laughs> and that's where that's where you get uh, some of the young guys making making mistakes, something they'll have to learn from. Jared Pulu is a very good player, but that's a mistake that you can't have. Yep, he was right there with pressure. There was a blocker involved, but the referee's positioning, and he said, nope, he wasn't blocked into the kicker, so I've got to make that call. That's a big 15-yarder along with the first down. It keeps Rodgers' drive alive. And really, they've gone nowhere the last two offensive sets. So this is a big break for the Rams as they mark it at the 31. Yeah, and, and Federal Way really needs to just settle down, get their feet underneath them. And Coach Marr really needs to get the, his guys under control and just realize, hey, we're more talented than this team. The reason they're even that we aren't up by even more than we are is because of some of these penalties we've given them. It's the mental aspect of the game. In yep. order to show your talent, you got to make those good decisions. And uh, good coaching only goes so far. You got to have your athletes actually take those coaching indicators. So back in position, the Rams' offense trips to the right. They're going to triple the run. As there's a rush to the line, Van Horn circles right under pressure again. He's hit as he throws, and he knocks it out of bounds. Good pressure there by number 53, Albert Havili, running him down. Albert Havili is a kid who's getting heavily recruited by several Pac-12 schools. Doesn't have any offers yet, but a guy who uh, really, really is a guy who could play middle linebacker or even at uh, one of the outside spots, more likely the will position where he can rush the quarterback, get after the run, and things like that. So... Um, a kid to keep an eye on as this season goes along, and it looks like they just picked up another flag. Yep, there was a flag we didn't notice. That'll be waved off, and I think that's a good one. Havili, you can see why he's well-regarded. The way he tracked him down, there really was no movement opportunity, and under controlled way, he forced the, the quarterback. He didn't just unload on him. It's not just because he's from good st uh, stock. You pointed out that his brother Andrew and his brother Jordan, both graduating from here, went on to play at the next level and he is expected to as well. Second down and 10 for the Rams. Van Horn, play action, out to Pegram. And again, LeGrant can't hold on. And at some point, you got to make the big plays when your team is counting on you. And I think for him, that's one he wants back. Now, quarterback made a good throw, but he didn't make the catch. And right now, I have Van Horn at two for eight for 16 yards. So very tough start for him this, year, this, uh, this season so far. One or two things go his way, like Pegram making that catch, and you think maybe instead of two for eight, he might be five for eight. Yes, exactly. 
And of course, there's, there's been a couple passes that have been dropped tonight. That's the part of the maturity. You got to shake that off as a quarterback and come right back and do what you're expected to do again. Fredaway shows blitz. And the deep safety is in. A flag as he rolls out. Van Horn ducks and runs and will get a few yards, but a third down play, that won't be enough unless this flag goes his way. I think it won't. Looks like it's going against the offense. Yeah, they're signaling holding right now. Yep. So they'll, they'll probably just take the play, give up the yardage, which was a gain of about two. Yep. And uh, send it to fourth and eight and probably get the ball back now if you're federal way. Let's get the ball back. So like you said, Playing aggressive from that deep safety position. Aaron Persinger in on that rush. One of the captains for Federal Way. One of the four. And, uh, you know, even though you don't get the sack or make the big play, it does help your team, and that's what you're looking for. Now back to receive is going to be Del Delando Tucker and Chico McClatcher. Although Tucker will be the deeper guy, so he's probably the guy they're looking to return this one. Well, that's the coaching team getting together and recognizing the last couple of punts have come up short. And then also, at your number one receiver, picked it up in the bounce. This time getting it away to the 34-yard line and ducking around is Chico McClatcher. McClatcher, a room along the right sideline, cuts inside at the 40, and he's wrapped out of bounds at the 32. Good run back by McClatcher and a good job by the coaches to set up for that. Yeah, definitely. And and you want, like we've said before, you want to get the ball in his hands as much as possible. He got that at the 35. Took it all the way down to the 31 on the other side. So, you know, a nice 34-yard return for him right there and, and gets the ball in his hands. Like I said, get the ball in that guy's hands as much as possible. He's lightning in a bottle. He's faster than almost everyone out there. And uh, you can get the ball into his hands a number of ways. Good math on your part, 34 yards exactly. Actually the best kick of the evening for Rodgers, and they get penalized and stung by that great run back by McClatcher. Trips left. This time from quarterback, the handoff, and it's going to be recovered by Federal Way, but with the new quarterback, Keenan Curran, number two, he's got to make sure on the exchange. Eagles lucky to get it back. Yeah, he's, he's more of the read option, zone option kind of guy for them. He can throw the ball a little bit too, but he's going to be more of the wildcat kind of quarterback and, and someone that, and that just looked like it was a bad handoff exchange between the two. Zeke Manil in the backfield, two of his options on the right-hand side, Aaron Persinger and Marcel Morris. Morris with that long catch earlier in the ball game. And they are going to pass to the two on the left, but it's a punt return as the uh, cornerback gets the fielding and has a chance for a run back, and he's going to be all the way back to the 12-yard line. Lots of action in that one, and that really worked to the advantage of the Rams. And there's one that Pegram actually did hang on to. <laughs> well, he does it in the defensive yeah. end, so not bad. <laughs> well, we didn't expect the throw from Keaton Curran, but, boy, they, they lined it up pretty well. Everything worked well except for that one guy on defense in the corner. Yeah, and on, on that play, if you're if you're uh, Keenan Curran, you want to throw the ball outside the numbers on that because then you give your man a shot at making the play. He threw that well inside the numbers a good three or four yards inside, and that just allowed Pegram to basically be back there. And like you said, it was like a punt return. Again, they break the huddle to the Rams from their own sideline. And uh, hats off to you, Scott, uh, 40 yards unofficially of penalties for Federal Way. This, their first turnover. And they're helping uh, the Rams stay in this ball game here in the first period with just over four minutes to go. Van Horn connects on the right-hand side. Again, the Eagles' defense Swallow him up at the 17-yard line for a gain of about five. And that was tight end Matt Malkia. We talked about him a little bit. First reception that I've seen him have uh, actually in a game. Uh, when I did a report on him this year, he hadn't caught a pass in, on the varsity at all. So that's a big thing for him. That'll get some of the nerves out for him. Our color analyst, Scott Eklund, is the voice you just heard. I'm Tom Smith. Glad you're with us here at Play On Sports. Scott is a writer for Dogman.com and Scout.com, which now has changed its name. More on that. The pitch to the left and a nice move to cut inside, making uh, making a miss. It was Harden. As Harden uh, making the move, but he slipped on the cut. And it looked like he actually could have got about five more yards had he not slipped. Mike Tate had a bead on him, and he just made him miss. And even with this field turf, such a great field to make a cut on. On a beautiful end of August night, August 31st here, we get set to start the school year 
after this Labor Day weekend. And the first quarter light dimming, throwing out wide and again wide open. Malkit can't come up with it. Van Horn just missed him. That did look like a miss by the quarterback, and there looks like a flag too. And we've had a few here on both sides of the ball. And it looks like Malkiet might have been covered up by somebody, so he was an illegal receiver down the field anyway. So explain that on the line at each end of the line. That's why yeah. they call them ends. That's your eligible receiver. If one of the flankers steps up on the line and covers that you up, as you say, Scott, that makes you, you can't throw to the guy on the inside. Yeah. And Malkiet is prototypical body type for a tight end here. Yeah, 6'4", 220 pounds, can run pretty well, 4'6", 4'7", 40 times. So a guy to keep an eye on. He's athletic. He's got soft hands. Well, they could push him back five yards, but the Eagles again are saying we want to try and get it back. Uh, says fourth down and two. Van Horn, is he going to pooch it? it? Looks like they're going to go for it here in their own end, and they are. Time in the backfield, no one rushing. Now he's flushed out. Nice pass down the right-hand side. And unable to connect with Trevor Merritt. Merritt gave it all he could. No flags there, so it will be federal way to take it over. And that's another drop pass, something that you just can't have, especially he was open. It was a tough throw by, by Van Horn. He threw it kind of wide, but that's, a, that's still a play he needs to make because it hit him right in the hands. Pretty good job to finally breaking through number 51, breathing down his neck, Jared Pulu. But again, credit Van Horn for staying in there and put it a pretty good pass out wide. Yeah, he did. He, because he's mobile, He's able to kind of shift the pocket a little bit. Yeah. Get get better windows for himself because he isn't very big. And uh, just wasn't able to complete that pass. Listed here at six feet. A little taller than the quarterback starting quarterback next week, right? Yeah. And a timeout will be called. The first one taken by Rodgers as we're four ticks under three minutes. And it's been a long first quarter. You'd expect that in the opening game. What with the penalties and especially the uh, moment of silence as Federal Way led by their coach and their whole community mourning the loss. Uh, sophomore Tope, who was the captain, honor student of the freshman squad that went undefeated. And uh, it's really good to see that while they'll take a moment for the severity and seriousness of that moment, that people can loosen up and enjoy themselves at tonight's football game. Yeah, and, and the one thing that I love about covering high school football is the community aspect yes. of everything. I also love these late August, early September games because the harvest moon is out. It was a hu it, tonight is a full moon, so I'm sure we'll see a nice big yellow or orange moon tonight. And you see Mount Rainier with the sunset coming off of it. But more than anything, I just love seeing the fans come out. I mean, you've got the other stands on the other side that they, they aren't packed, but a good number, good turnout for for coming remember, up. Remember, school hours. hasn't even started yeah, yet, Scott. Hasn't so. even started yet. Our side is probably three-quarters full, too, so it's it's a good crowd tonight. Elliott back at quarterback, hands off the ball to Rod Jones, Jr. Looked like a pretty good hole, but the Rams firm things up after a uh, blast to the 16-yard line, so four yards in a cloud of field turf dust. What do you call that stuff now? Yeah. <laughs> you can't call it dust. Can Rubber. You? <laughs> That's what's in there. Uh, Mike Mazza actually got in and made a nice play, got some penetration in there on the inside for Rodgers and uh, made it so that Jones didn't have very far to run, but he still got three yards out of it. Morris on the right, way out is Mike Tate. He's being spied there by Van Horn. There's a deep motion, handed off to the inside. The ball pops out, and alertly Evan Elliott jumps at it. That is a big play. That's two miscues on, on handoffs for Federal Way. One by Elliott and one by number two, Keenan Curran, who was in the last series and threw the interception. So they're going back to their starting quarterback. And uh, so that was an exchange issue, not the solid tackle by the Rams defender. It just popped right back in the arms and basketing the ball. Elliott running, and it will still be third and seven now. So lose it down, but keep the ball. And alone, nice job by the fullback. And it's connected to Marcel Morris. They got to credit Rod Jones Jr. there for picking up the man. The lone defender getting in the face of Evan Elliott, and it's complete at the five-yard line. First yeah, down. 13-yard gain. Nice throw by Elliott. Threw it low so his man could just go down and get it. Perfectly thrown, actually. Marcel Morris cradling it, making sure all the way it gets into the bread basket, and he's back out on the right-hand side while Tate takes up the left. Flanker on the left for Federal Way is Zeke McNeil, who's in motion 
They hand it up the gut, trying to get the yardage of Rod Jones Jr. And Rogers rams all over him. And the uh, cheers across the way signal their success on defense. I don't know if our camera crew can pick up Mount Rainier at some point, but it's absolutely gorgeous with the soft blue sky, the Marcus Zuzaleski style streaks of clouds at its base, and then the shine of the sun that yet to drop over that Olympic horizon. Back behind us, Scott. We're underneath the press box here on the west side of Federal Way Memorial Stadium, enjoying our first high school football game of the season. Glad you're with us, folks. Right here, it's PlayOnSports.com bringing you this WIAA network coverage. Again, motion the other way. Elliott has the sky to get it. And he runs it in for the touchdown. What a play as he grabs it like a rebound on the basketball court. Looks for the opening and runs it in. Good improvising by the quarterback senior, Evan Elliott. Yeah, it really made it difficult on him. And, and I don't know if he was actually supposed to do a read, but because the snap went so high, I think that threw Rodgers off and it gave him an opening and he took it. So touchdown number two for the Eagles. And even as things have been a bit of a hiccup mode in this first quarter for Federal Way, they've found a way to get into the end zone and into attempt to convert the point after. Kicker Kobe Craig. Very athletic move by Elliott. Tucker with the hold. And pooching it under pressure. There were two of them in there for Rodgers. It is good at a 14-0 lead with 34.6 seconds left in the opening quarter of play. And it looks like the student body's going to get healthy this year. They're all out there with the bell ringing, doing the uh, push-ups. We'll see how they do at the end of the season if Federal Way can continue to score in the way that we would expect. 14 starters returning and a lot of junior classmen standing out this Federal Way team coming in with high expectations. Anytime you play an SPSL team, I don't care what they're expected to do. You know you got a tough job on your hands. Yeah, the SPSL, I'd say after Kinko, it's, it is definitely the toughest league in the state. Then you kind of look at the Greater St. Helens League with Camus now up at 4A, Skyview, Union. You got some pretty good teams over there. But Kinko and SPSL, are the two the two top teams? What no top love top for Westco? I like the Westco, but it's <laughs> it's just not the same. The, the quality it's a different deal. You know, you you might have one or two really standout teams, like Lake Stevens last year. I right. mean, they were great team, but in the SPSL you have seven teams that yeah. could all be state worthy. You look up and down the north or the south, even the down team, so called down team Piala, for example. You know they're going to have something for you to deal with. Rogers here showing how tough a team they are. In the early going, Federal Way with a two touchdown lead kicking off all the way to the five yard line and picking it up and getting on the run as LeGrant Pegram. He finds some room, but he's tripped up as he crosses the 30 yard line. And was that a touchdown saving tackle? Maybe not. There was some good blue down the field, but an important play and helping him back up after making that play. Well, on the coverage team is. That was Mike Tate, actually. Yeah. yeah. Made it I wouldn't say it was touchdown saving, but definitely they would have had it up around the 50, probably in positive yards. Well, you want to get the ball in the hands of Mr. Pegram, number nine, showing he's got a motor, gets around the side, winding through the open field pretty well there. Let's see if Rodgers can get the ball in his hands and if Van Horn can find some options to open up this tough Eagles defense whose only real yield has been mistakes that they've made. Yeah, really it has. I mean, I, I can't even remember other than... Uh, other than the penalty, I don't even think Rodgers has been past the 50, have they? Nope, they have I don't not. Think so. Van Horn flushed and uh, backing out of the way was his receiver, and he gets all the way to the 37, maybe, yeah, 37 yard line as he's collared finally. So those linebackers are pretty quick for a federal way. They, they are very quick, but uh, Van Horn showed good athleticism, good escapability. Got out there on the right, on the left side of their their line, and and uh, Gannon actually had to, or, I'm sorry, Curran had to come up and make the play. And the horn sounds with the Eagles leading over the Rams by a score of 14-0. We have the end of the first period, and a little bit of a mark that uh, Trevor Merritt might have uh, put himself in the position to make one of the blocks as we take a break here.
Well, PlayOnSports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championships events in all sports from across the country. PlayOnSports.com. High school sports lives here. Hey, folks, don't forget, after the game, we have our post-game show. Stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com post-game show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's what's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports. PlayOnSports.com. High school sports lives here. That was about a six-yard game for Van Horn at the end, to end the quarter and, and uh, got them some positive yardage. Second and four. Well, they need a ground game to balance off, and they need some of their receivers, especially Pegram, to come up with some catches. Is he uh, three for ten now unofficially? Van Horn flushed again, throws it out to the right-hand side, and he's collected, but not until he gets to the 45. And a good job by the target man, Damian Jackson, doing just what we ordered, getting those Van Horn passes grabbed in. He'll run off the field, being replaced by Austin Harden in the backfield. Actually, he'll be in a slot formation. Pegram left with Trevor Merritt. And you've got Zach Monk on the wide side, too, with Harden. They're seeking the pass game again. The underneath is open. Trevor Merritt pulls it in, gets a little blocking help, and he'll get only to the 50-yard line before the Eagles force him out. But you know what? We mentioned they hadn't been to the 50 yet, so that's a positive way of looking at it. And, and they're starting to find a little bit more open underneath. Instead of yep. running the deeper, more intermediate, intermediate routes, they're starting to throw underneath, and that will draw Federal Way in, and that's when you can go over top. Open things up for you. Build. Build your offensive game just like you do your program, one step at a time, and you mark your achievements. So mark that down, folks, here with 11.05 left in the half. Rodgers gets to midfield. Can they build on that? The keeper, a rolling left. Van Horn dives across the 50 to the 47-yard line, and there's a sense that this quarterback is a spiritual leader for this Rodgers team. He has been facing some adversity. He hasn't really uh, flinched at all. He's gone right after him. Yeah, he really has. You can see his athleticism. He's also a basketball player and, and, and someone that, that uh, does a lot of things at Rogers as, a, as just an athlete, but also as a, as a leader in the school, student, student body uh, stuff that he does. And, and uh, I think you're seeing him try to get the, will this team to get back into this game. Alone in the backfield in the throw inside, and that's off the thigh pad of his intended receiver, number eight, Zach Monk. No flags here this quarter so far. It's going to be third and four. You spoke too soon. It's fourth and four. Is there a flag on the <laughs> no, field? No, no, no. <laughs> no, just. <laughs> Didn't mean to yeah, you send out us. the vibe yeah. there. It was a really good pass again, but Monk unable to haul it in. And they had, on that play, they had the coverage they wanted. It was off coverage. They ran a five-yard slant in, had enough yardage for the first down. Receiver just didn't make the play. And the punt from the 40-yard line lined over, and Chico McClasher says, let it go out of bounds, and it does at the 15-yard line. So Federal Way now will have to start deep in their own end. First time they've really faced that kind of a situation. Yeah, I think both of their, uh, all three of their um, offensive drives, yeah. yeah, that have started in their own end have been up around the 40, so. Yep, and the first one they got was at the 40-yard line. Of course, they took the five-yard penalty. Yep, backed off 30 to the 35, did not score in that drive and then held the Rodgers deep in their own end. So now, at that very end of the field where Rodgers stalled so many of their drives, Federal Way will attempt to get things underway. Talk about Van Horn and his basketball skills. And the quarterback there going high to make the rebound, improvising on the play for the six-yard run. And the motion fakes the handoff, wrapped up in the end before he can pitch to the motion man. And it looked like Zeke McNeil was expecting it there. He was, but uh, the player coming in to make the play was number, I believe it was number 56. Nigel Harbison, who made the play. So 
Second down and 13. This time they try the left. Chico McClatcher tries to go the other way and make it another good defensive play. Is that receiver, LeGrant Pegram, coming up from the defensive back position to make a play? Yeah, in that case, Delano Tucker just needs to come up and, and put his head down and get three yards instead yeah. of trying to make a play. Back in his own end zone. Working his way out under pressure. Didn't have the throw that he wanted, but at least he goes back to the original line of scrimmage, getting back four yards. And it uh, looks like they're going to face fourth and ten. But there is a flag as the officials converge for the discussion. Federal Way prepares for the punt. And it looks like it was well down the field, and it looks like it was holding against... Now there's an opportunity Rogers. for Federal Way as wow. really nowhere to go. Federal Way seems convinced. Oh, here they go. They'll change to the offensive unit. And if you look here, that that run took place back down on, oh, about the 15-yard line. Yep. The penalty was all the way up on the 30. There was no reason to have anything well, at that point, he wasn't even looking. But if there's defensive holding and he had to pull it down and yeah. run it, maybe the uh, officials are judging. At any rate, they've decided to award the Eagles. And so it will still be third, but it'll bring up a third and one. As the ball is marked on the 25-yard line. So even though the spot of the foul was near the 35, 34-yard line, they're going to mark it off. Elliott checks his wristband, has one runner deep with him, and uh, I can guess it might be going to number six, Rod Jones Jr. Whistled before the handoff, as in there quickly defensively, Brandon Bishop made our quarterback Elliott flinch just a bit after the whistle. And Federal Way will talk things over and make sure in this third down play, they're leading 14 to zero, but they want to convert and keep this drive alive in their own end. And if you're Federal Way, you want to go in at least, you want to get at least some points out of this. Yep. Put yourself up three scores. 841 on the scoreboard clock, which is stopped for the timeout, of course. Remember, this drive began way back on the 15. Federal Way looking to stall, getting ready to punt, but a flag had fallen and defensive holding and the pass routes called, so... Elliott's crew kept alive. And just on cue, like I mentioned earlier, we got a nice harvest moon going up right over top of the school and the stadium right now. Just on the other side Beautiful. of the field, the harvest moon. What's that mean? Corn of the cob to yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just something where, where I think the reason they call them the harvest moon was because you could actually do some farming at night because exactly. it was so bright. Mike Tate on the left. Elliott waiting for the play to allow, goes under center. Eye formation behind him, power formation. Hands it to the up back who gets through off the right side, and it is Jones across the 30 to the 32, and a first down for the Eagles. So they've kept the drive alive. And again, Rodgers letting the Eagles off the hook instead of receiving the punt now. Got to keep their defensive unit out there. Jones is, a, is an athletic player, but he's not explosive. He's right. more of the grinded out kind of guy. That was one, if McClatcher had that and got that open field, he would have been gone. It made a move or two, and he would have just found the green space. Hand off on the left side, wide open, keeping it going. Zeke McNeil across the 30, 40, to the 20, the 10. He'll make it all the way, and it's a touchdown for the Eagles. Zach McNeil making those moves, just like you had said in the previous play. Yeah, 67-yard touchdown run by McNeil. Made one guy miss in the hole, and then actually he just outran everybody else. So that was a 68-yard run for McNeil unofficially. Puts another six on the board, and can it go from 20 to 21? Well, other than missing the field goal attempt, Kobe Craig has looked pretty solid on this PATs. And that's the thing that fans, as they watch Federal Way this year, whether they watch it on our webcasts or whether they come and watch it live or whatever, is Federal Way is a big play team. They have so many athletes. I've mentioned it so many times already in the broadcast, but they have so much speed, so many athletes, 
as long as they're playing the game they can play, they should be able to have a, quite a few big plays every game. And in to block the kick. And again, the jinx of the announcers. So <laughs> the Rogers Rams having enough. And the Federal Way students <coughs> wrapping off the points on push-ups may be grateful that the Rams blocked. That's 20 to nothing here with 8-12 left in the opening half. Federal Way opening up at home. They've got a good crowd on hand and nothing but the SPSL. The bus rides are pretty short. Yeah. Despite all the schools in the area. What is it, Puyallup to here is what, about probably 40 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that? Well, nowadays with traffic, it could be yeah. anywhere from 40 <laughs> minutes to four hours. That's true. We've had that even during the playoffs last year. But all within range, all within shopping distance, if you want to put it that way. Yeah, the mothers can just drop off the kids and go shopping somewhere. Yeah. There's SeaTac Mall, right? Or what is that? What is that mall down here? The Mall of America. Yeah, the mall. It's right <laughs> over here. I can't remember the yeah. name of it. Not yeah, the What a great environment for the young kids. So much excitement. Good game to watch. Of course, lots of hot dogs and popcorn and so forth to go grab. One of the great things is being out here to feel the whole atmosphere. We hope that we're conveying some of that. I'm Tom Smith alongside Scott Eklund. Enjoying this football game right along with you at home or wherever you're tuned in. Yeah. Dialed it up. For Now, if you're Rodgers, you really have to just get something going. You want to have a nice long drive, keep Federal away from getting the ball back, go down, get some points on the board. You always want to go with something positive before uh, the halftime. Craig with a low kick, kicking to the north this time on the bounce at the five-yard line. It's going to be Austin Harden making some moves, and what a tackle before he can get across the 20 and wrapping him up. Michael Tate again on special teams. Made a lot of plays on special teams tonight. Tate's made a couple of plays, and for the Rams, they'll set up shop at their own 24. Decent position, especially given some of the start points for these Roger Rams. Governor John R. Rogers, high school named after. Nine-year coach Gene Bowen putting things together. I think Rodgers has almost as many cheerleaders as they have football players over there. <laughs> Junior quarterback Grayson Madlin will take the shotgun, and we have a flag perhaps for delay of game. And uh, for the Rams, they're going to have to start five yards further back. And this is what happens sometimes when you uh, replace quarterbacks, different series and things like that. They're not in the rhythm with the uh, – Referees, they don't know the clock count, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's something that uh, you you do risk by doing something like that. How to develop a sense of the game from the sideline? That's a challenge a young athlete faces. Grayson now off the flank. He tries to target Trevor Merritt and throws it shy. So it'll be second and 15 for the Rams. Grayson Madlin, your junior quarterback. For me, it's always kind of a wonder anytime. A more junior classman comes in to play quarterback. Usually it's not because the other guy's doing well unless the game's well in hand kind of a thing. And you're expecting them to pick up the rhythm like you're saying and execute with confidence. And uh, it's always a challenge for the young athlete. But that is something they sign up for. So you do give them that opportunity. Second and 15. Handing it off. Rolling left. Andrew Nelson and uh, Federal Way's pursuit is there in good order dropping him for a loss of two, maybe three. Looked like there was a little bit of a late hit there, over there. Don't see a flag come down, did you? No, there, no, no, uh, nothing came in. Delano Tucker and another player just kind of were into it, and Tucker kind of shoved him off. Luckily, they didn't get a penalty on that. That was a loss of two right there. Y you're just not going to outrun Federal Way to the, to the edges here. This is something where they're, they're going to have to find seams inside, which is tough because Federal Way is so big on the interior side of their defensive line. Steven Van Horn into the game, but not a quarterback. He's out at a wide receiver position. Trips on the right for Grayson Madlin. Madlin now rolling right. Oh, and he barely gets away from one before. Three blue shirts drag him down. 
just across the 10 yard line. They'll be pushed back for another loss of seven. And there's Rod Jones Jr. Pursuit from the backside. Some of that play was made by JT Tiuli. Yep. Big off uh, defensive lineman, number 74, just came off getting fives and, and pats on the back from his coaches. Number 53, Albert Havili, very nearly wrapped up Madeline before he got through, and he was working off a block. Yeah. And that really forced the quarterback to, to dig in, and then you had three of those, including the guy you're mentioning. Two back now at the uh, Rams 45-yard line, anticipating this punt. And uh, Van Horn gets it away, and there's a muff, but it's picked up. And going down the left-hand sideline, trying to leap to the defender, Marcel Morris with a good return. Down across the 30, and it's the Eagles in great field position leading 20 to 0 with 619 on the second quarter clock here at Federal Way Memorial Stadium. And Federal Way is poised to go up at, by a minimum of uh, three, 23 points. But well, but we can say there's a lot of confidence in the kicker, Toby <laughs> Craig, except they did have the last PAT block. Federal Way is not thinking about that right now. They are thinking about getting more points, yeah. and they're in great position for that, Scott, as you point out. And we see uh, Curran come back in. Curran now, the quarterback, two runners and three receivers, two on the right. He looks to pass again. No fear into the corner, making separation and catching for the touchdown. Mike Tate for the 30-yard scoring pass from Keenan Curran. Well, Curran showed a lot of maturity. Remember the last time he went to the air, he got picked off. But Federal Way again, a one-play scoring drive. And this one... One yard shorter, 30 yards. So could we say Keenan Kern's a boomer bust type? <laughs> his two, his two uh, pass attempts, one was an interception, one was a 30-yard touchdown. Every pass he's thrown has not been dropped. Correct. And he may be the only quarterback so far that we can say that about this evening. As uh, Craig gets set to add on, they're going to just go for one here. Some coaches want to make up for that missed PAT, not Coach Marr. Tucker gets set with his kicker, puts it down. Craig goes high, and it is good. 27 for Federal Way, and Rodgers now with zero. They need to find something positive to go into the locker room with. Yeah. They've had a lot of good things, but at this point, that's not what's on their mind. A lot of their, a lot of their early possessions were helped by Federal Way yep. miscues. They were uh, personal foul penalties, pass interference penalties, things like that that allowed – Rodgers to really get some momentum going offensively, but then they weren't able to do anything with it. And now Federal Way has settled down. You haven't seen as many mistakes on their part. And now we're starting to see really their dominance over Rodgers at this point. Well, they have some successes to point to, mostly defensively. A couple of rhythm issues where uh, Van Horn was able to get the ball out and someone did catch it. Some good plays for them, but they're going to have to find, figure out something to. With Damian Jackson collecting a couple of those passes from Stephen Van Horn, they've tried a thing or two to see if they can shake off Federal Way, but they really have not found anything. As that harvest moon now rises in the east, it's pretty cool with those clouds kind of streaking it away. Through it, yeah. I'm looking to see if there's more um, telephone wires, but no, those are nope. clouds. And uh, Mount Rainier now, no sun in it, just dim in the distance to the right. Just a beautiful evening we could describe, even if our cameras aren't bringing it to you at home. As Craig sets up for the kickoff, he got a lot of his kickoffs to the line lately, though they've been returnable. Craig again streaks it over to the corner on the right-hand side. On the far side, picking it up, trying to find some space. Juking one, juking another. LeGrant, Pegram brought down. So a lot of distance covered laterally, but maybe only a 10-yard return. That was a tackle by Chico McClatcher getting back there, and you're not going to outrun him. As long as he takes the right angle, there's no one who will outrun him in this state. We talk in future track athletes if we look forward to next spring. <laughs> <laughs> Chico is a very good track athlete, but he's he'll tell you that he's a football player who can run track. There you go. He he's he runs a legit 4-4 40. I saw him at a camp this year. Smallish though. That's that's gonna be the issue that he deals with. But a lot of people have compared him to a poor man's DeAnthony Thomas. Now I wouldn't say he's quite in that level yet, 
but he's a guy who, who definitely can make plays. DeAnthony Thomas started for Crenshaw from the time he was a freshman. Says a lot, and of course, uh, McClatcher did start as a freshman, averaging 220 yards in those games he played last year, so the sophomore. And we're going the other way now as Rodgers hands it off, and there's a positive play. So Coach Bowen saying we need to be conservative. Let's stay with what's worked for us. And he's not going to the air deep in his own end to his credit. A run of four brings up second and six as they mark the ball at the 14-yard line, or is that the 13? <laughs> Actually, they move it to the 17-yard line. Let me get my line straight here, Actually, Scott. it's closer to the 18-yard eight, line, I think. Yeah. Got it on the 18, so it's second and six. Madeline handing off. Morris on the left-hand side finds an open. He cuts inside. He gets across the 20 near the first down marker. And do they mark at the 25 or the 24? Will be a third down opportunity, and they will move the stakes. And that's only the fifth first down of the first half for, for uh, Rodgers. You're not going to put a lot of points on the board only getting that when you're over halfway through the second quarter. No, you're not. For Coach Marr, you want your defense to stay focused, keep the pressure on the Rams. For Coach Bowen, you're trying to find a way to keep this drive alive. So the first first down is the first step. Madeline, the handoff. And the ball is loose, but it's marked down as Madeline gets laid out. And that was by Jared Pulu. Once again, another big-time player for them. Only a sophomore. We mentioned earlier his brothers Andrew and Jordan are both playing for D1 schools. And uh, very athletic kid. Likes to hit. Comes from good pedigree. Someone to keep an eye on. Talking about football around the state of Washington in the Northwest. They've joined some Wesco athletes from Lake Stevens out in Wyoming. And we got to figure yep. that for Jordan, who just graduated last year, he's got a couple of new things to deal with when you go to Wyoming. Beautiful state on the left-hand side, wide open, and hauled in by Zach Monk. So Rogers responding, and Madeline showing some good composure in the back there under pressure from Federal Way. Yeah, he did. So he gets some of that yardage back on the third down. Instead of second and uh, 18, it'll be third and four. They mark the ball right on the 30-yard line. So is uh, Federal Way kind of playing a prevent, or why is are the Rams seeing some success here? I think the Rams are seeing some success just because Federal Way isn't playing. Well, <laughs> just as we oh. said that. And there was a fumble as three Federal Way athletes get in there and recovering it. Number two, Keenan Curran. So he's on a streak now, too, defensively as well as offensively. But who came a busting in there for Madeline? That was number 52 and number 74. Uh, JT, uh, JT Tiuli and number 54, Winston Havili. So two players that, that we've talked about a little bit. <laughs> Keep the brotherly theme yeah, going here. Yeah, and, and guys, I, he didn't even have a chance to even set up on that. They were on him before he could even get set up. Well, the Rodgers having success. The defensive coordinator <laughs> dialing up a three-man blitz. Well, actually, three men get through. Uh, one of them was a safe uh, corner blitz. And here comes Federal Way from scoring position at the 14-yard line. On the left-hand side, giving it a chance. But look at the Rodgers-Rams respond defensively. As Chico McClasher unable to gain yardage, he lose three to the 18-yard line. Actually lose five to the 19. Mike Tate, that sense that at any point, though, Federal Way draws up the right play, executes it correctly, and scores or makes that big play. Second and 14 when you're inside the 20. So you have, oh, go ahead. Yep, and there's movement. And someone said go ahead, and they went ahead, and <laughs> a little bit early, though, making a good defensive play, but an offensive error, it's J.T. Tuley. So go ahead with what your thoughts. Yeah, was. I was just going to mention that Tuley is athletic enough to play inside on defense, but outside. He's playing left tackle for federal weight tonight. Has good feet. I like the build of him. Yeah. He's 6'3", 295. That is not going to play tackle at the next level. If you're going to play tackle you're at the next level, you got to be 6'5 or taller. But what you got to like about him is his aggressiveness and also the fact that he's athletic enough to handle guys in space like that. He's built like a block. And Elliott hauls it, gets it wide to Delando Tucker, who scampers forward 
Inside the 10, he's down at the nine yard line, so Federal Way on second down gets 10 yards back. And that was a nice 11 yard gain. Tucker comes back for the ball and then turns up field quickly. They mark it just inside the 15 yard line, so they give him. I guess they gave him about 10 yards, actually. Yep. Rolling left this time. The right hander is going to get slammed, and he does. Buried in the backfield, dropped for a loss. Garrett Van Schlittenhorst, one of those Dutch names that sprinkle the South Sound as well as the Northwest corner of our state. You know about the two A teams, Linden and Ferndale. Yep. A lot of interesting names. <laughs> yep. From that hereabouts. Well, now Rogers feeling good defensively. Fourth down. And they're not going to punt. They're not going to go for the kick. They're going to put the ball in the hands of their quarterback. And Evan Elliott will see if he can find one of the athletes to make a play for the Eagles. 2.43 left in the half. Elliott alone in the backfield steps up. What composure as he connects to Brendan Warren. Collects it at the one and walks in for the touchdown. Pater for Federal Way. And that was really good job by Elliott, keeping the play alive, escaping pressure, stepping up, and finding the wide open man. How does a guy get that wide open on fourth and 20? Well, he found that space. The Rams were kind of in an umbrella, but I like the way that uh, Elliott handled that pressure, just stepping up, the angle of the defender, just calmly keeping focus downfield, threw a strike, and Brendan Warren collecting for the touchdown. The point after is the Tucker gets it down. The Rams are in again. The kick's away, and it's good. So it's 34-0, to zero and Federal Way is beginning to feel their oats. They yeah, can, yeah, they, they are, and, and I think what they're, they're, they're feeling very comfortable in the way things are going. I think that this is an opportunity for them to get a lot of playing time for some of their younger guys this, this game. A lot of playing time for the younger guys, but also, like you say, they've got so many athletes, and they're doing a pretty good job of spreading it around, not only offensively, but the different players we've called on defense to make the play. Those are different names, and that's got to build your squad's confidence. Yeah, definitely. And you're on the sideline. You, it also keeps you a little more alert because you know you're going to have your shot, and you want to know what the guy you're filling in for is doing and how you're going to respond out there. That's not always easy to accomplish that, especially when you've got a squad. Look at Federal Way. They're not exactly Alabama with the numbers. But they got a good solid number of uh, athletes on the sideline at all time, as does Rogers. Talking about the Bellevue Trinity game, you talk about Trinity traveling up here from Texas with 105 players. Yep. They have 300 athletes to show up for football. Yeah, and and that, wow, and that was <laughs> the first time that uh, Texas team had ever left the state. That's right. And lost a game. And lost a game. So that was a big thing, and and. Uh, Dave Softy Mahler interviewed uh, Coach Goncharov on KJR earlier today, and they were talking about it, and, and he, he admitted that it was sort of playing for the state of Washington and just the pride level of the prep football up here because we all know Texas is where football is uh, religion. Texas and California, right, but especially Texas. Everyone thought Trinity would beat Bellevue handily, so it was a win that the whole state took note of. Morris picks it up at the 12-yard line. Pretty good run back across the 30, but with two and a half minutes left in the half, can Rodgers pick up from the momentum before the turnover on that sack by Madland? And, and earlier on, we were talking when it was just 20 to nothing, so <laughs> two scores ago, we were talking about how Rodgers needed to get something positive, get a score before halftime, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Right now you're looking at this game has gotten out of hand. Yep. If you're Rod, the Rodgers coaches, they've actually got their players huddling up over there. If you're the Rodgers coaches, you're looking for a down-by-down down positive. Absolutely. Can we get three yards? Can we get four? Can we get a five-yard completion? Anything to just get their kids believing that, hey, what we're doing is going to work. Deep in the second quarter, they finally made it to midfield. Then getting the first down from deep in their own end, the turnover. Van Horn is back in, and he goes to the flat. And again, unable to collect, although they've had some success with this young man, Damian Jackson hauling it in from both uh, Madeline and Van Horn to uh, have multiple targets you can go to, but Rodgers now just looking for that rhythm, getting things going. 
And they got the tight end, milk it way out here in the right. Two slots, one on either side. In the backfield is Andrew Nelson, along with Van Horn. Straight up defense. Quarterback rush. Down the right-hand side to Morris and just airs it out a bit too much, about five yards deep over the head of Austin Harden. All is incomplete and will bring up third down. And if uh, Van Horn had had actual time on that, he would have seen Malky actually opening up across the middle. He was running kind of an arrow route. Um, but that was he was running more of a clear-out route so that they could run a wheel route behind it. But that was covered up. Malky had actually was wide open over the middle. Uh, wide open is probably a, a misnomer. <laughs> it wasn't quite wide open, but he definitely had an open. Had some space open. there. Well, Harden cutting across the middle and uh, on the out route. He threw it out anyhow, and you saw Damian Jackson respond a little bit late on that. So uh, Van Horn putting it safely away, and it will bring up a fourth down decision for Coach Bowen and the Roger Grams, who don't want to invite Federal Way to show off anything more in their explosive offense. At least not in their end of the field. They hope to uh, take this punt and get it downfield. Now notice that it is Van Horn now punting the ball. And uh, on the receiving end of things for Federal Way is Mark Marcel Morris in the left. And is that Delano Tucker in the middle of the field? Yeah, I believe so. Van Horn under pace. A little bit of pressure, not a lot. Almost a line drive to Tucker, who's at 35. Quickly crossing the 45 midfield. Making some moves at the 40, Actually, the 30. It's a 20. And going in for the score, number seven is it's Chico McClatcher showing yeah. off his ability. And you told us about that, yeah. kid. He made it way through some tight spaces, but then he made some moves that opened it up. Yeah, and then he, he showed the speed, kicking it from third into fourth, sprinting down the left side for the touchdown. 60-yard kick uh, punt return. Once he gets the open space, he, you're not going to catch him. Well, there's some blocking. It is a team sport yes. after all, but... All the way in from the 35, 65-yard punt return touchdown for Federal Way. And right now it's 40 points. No matter where you look at it, that's a big number when yeah. you're going into the half. Yeah. It's a big number at the end of any ball game. And let's put it this way. The way that Rodgers is, is uh, performing on offense, Federal Way could get the ball again. They're like those ATMs where you just put your card in and get your money back. Federal Way's defense without even really doing a whole lot, is getting the ball back pretty easily. Craig with the kick, and this time it's good. And it's 41 for Federal Way, 0 for Rodgers here, and still 201 left. So that was a 29-second exchange. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, yeah. <laughs> Who's operating the clock back here? It is a hometown clock, I know. But really, it was a two and a half minutes when Rodgers had the ball. Three downs, punt. Return for a touchdown and only 29 seconds off yeah, the clock. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's a pretty it, efficient defense. Yeah, it is. It is very much so. Well, that's Be what happens efficient. when you throw the ball three straight times. You yep. know, and don't have it. Stop the clock. Now, the thing, the thing is, in the second half, I believe you're going to have a running clock because of the because point it, the mercy rule and, yeah. and things like it. What is that? What is it? Is it 28 points? Yep. 28 points. So, so I, that's what you're looking at in the second half. But in this first half. This is one of the longest first half of high school football I've seen in a while. Well, it's not like Rodgers has been throwing the ball entirely, but on that last drive, it was a throw each yeah. time. So that stops the clock for Federal Way. And then um, having Van Horn in there, he gets more distance on his kicks, but he has no elevation, so the coverage is not in great position for Rodgers. And then you got a guy like McClatcher who will eat you up yeah. if you don't have good coverage. I have uh, Van Horn at uh, 4 of 16 for 32 yards passing right now. And uh, the other young man, and I'm drawing a blank on his name. Elliot. Yeah. Elliot. Or no, uh, I meant the other uh, quarterback, Madlin. Madlin, yeah. For, for uh, Rodgers. He's uh, one of two passing. Here's the kickoff for Federal Way. From the eight-yard line, do a reverse now on the left-hand side. Federal Way with pretty good uh, spying on that one as Damian Jackson really nowhere to go. They won't make it to the 20. 153 left in the half. Now, when Rodgers came out deep in their own end and ran the ball, they actually had some success. 
This last series was three passes and a punt. Will they go back to the run now and just try to get that, like you say, step-by-step -step progress? Yeah, that's really what you have to do. It, I, I believe that they need to come out and, and, and uh, run the ball. Run, play the game like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah. How would you call this game if it was 0-0? Zero, zero? And I think that's what they're going to do. Well, Federal Way moving things around a little bit. Aaron Persinger still in the game, but the deep safety now is Zick Neal. They do hand it off. Rodgers busted a gut as Andrew Nelson. It's up to the 20, so a two-yard gain, or do they mark him to the 21 for three? And that'll be second and seven. Three yards plus is better than eight yards minus, yes. better than a sack and a fumble, which Madeline certainly uh, wants to relive, does not want to relive. Van Horn in the backfield, pulls it down, looking for a pass. He's going to run it, and he bounces the ball, but he's ruled to have been down before losing the ball. He'll be, I think, shy of the stakes by a good three, maybe four yards as he crosses the 25-yard line. So pretty good play by Van Horn, but you got to hold on to that football. Yeah, you do, and, and when you're stretching for it, you have to make sure that you're holding it in a way that it'll go out of bounds if it's knocked out of your hands, luckily for him. Looks he, like there was a penalty, too. So they're going to add another five or so on there and as the officials walk in it looks like it's going to be a 33 yard line so um, face mask face mask penalty okay and it will be first down for rams that's not getting them well get them one step closer to double digits on first downs yep um first and 10 for the 33 and a crossing route that brings the defenders into play Leaping for it was number eight, Zach Monk. But they had a couple of uh, Eagles who could have made a play, notably Treshawn Nared, the senior defensive back. At 5'7", he went up high with Monk. Break it up. Second and 10. Clock stopped at 115, so 75 seconds left. Rodgers desperate to get something on the board, desperate to get across midfield and go in the locker room. And the handoff and wrapped up really quickly. Andrew Nelson... Had a lot of space except for one guy in blue named Jared Pulu who's been all over the field tonight. Yeah, Pulu's looked really, really good to me. Studly looking guy, uh, like the um, freshman captain of last year, Tope, who drowned and was honored earlier, chiseled at 6'3", 185. They had a lot of promise for that young man on the football field as well as elsewhere. Pulu built that way too, hit on the throw. And unable to run underneath it with two men in coverage was number nine, LeGrant Pegram. Pegram, their fleet footed guy, but Federal Way pretty much there every time they try to throw to him. Yeah. And now, now if you're Federal Way, I, my, my guess is Coach Mara is just going to have his guys kneel on the ball, end the half, go into the locker room up 41 nothing, And I think we're going to see a lot of the young guys play. This is almost like a they're going to be able to treat it like a preseason game in that respect. Chance to have the whole lineup get out there. But finishing the half with 37.7 is not a foregone conclusion. Van Horn from his 20 gets some nice height this time. And they're backing away are the Eagles. It knocks against Spencer O'Neill and they'll down it at the 40-yard uh, line. Of course, if it knocks against the defensive team on a the punting team and then bounces the advantage of the returning team, they normally would give that advantage, advantageous bounce. Yeah. The assistant coaches head down from the coaching box, and with just half a minute left, we'll expect them to take a knee, but we shall see. Rogers' defense has some good things to look at, which is a hard thing to say with 40 plus one on the board, I know. And uh, interesting game going on tonight between two uh, powers, Bothell and Sky, uh, Skyline are playing up on the plateau tonight. Uh, hopefully we can get some uh, updates on scores. And there's the knee taken as we get the final count off. Bothell and Skyline playing as a non-league game. It doesn't yeah, affect anything. It's yeah. kind of odd. Yeah. <laughs> but two powerhouses. Fans complaining they're not at 100 yet? Is that what yeah. we heard? <laughs> well, just a joke from one of the Federal Way supporters. There's actually a lot of interesting games this big big games this weekend. You got 
the top-ranked team from 2A playing the top-ranked team from 1A. Of course, preseason rankings don't mean a lot, but no. still a lot of fun. Kings and Linden, Linden tied yeah. up tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, the horn sounds. That's the end of the first half. It's Federal Way with 41. Rogers going in, trying to solve some problems. The big goose egg up on the board. And a tough, tough game for them here. Every game in the SPSL is tough. Will Federal Way be able to say it was a tough game for them in this first half if they do not have a chance to come out as the starters and play a whole lot in the second half? I don't think so. I, I think they're, they're, they probably looked at this as, hey, they gave us a challenge, but really we're the only team that held our we're, – we're the ones who held ourselves exactly. back early on. So now is a chance, like a preseason game, to, to sort out some things and hopefully not repeat some of those mistakes. Hand the ball off to your second unit and third unit teams and cheer them on in the second half. So that's what we're looking for. Well, folks, we're going to be live here, but this is halftime. 41-0 Federal Way over the Rogers Rams in this SPSL South matchup to open up the first weekend of high school football. You're on PlayOnSports.com, the WIAA, Washington Interscholastic Athletic Association uh, Network. And I'm on Tom Smith alongside Scott Eklund. We'll do some tallying, get back with some numbers before we kick off here in the second half.
Welcome back to Play On Sports here at Federal Way Memorial Stadium where the Eagles lead the Rams of Rogers by a score of 41 to 0. It was 14 0 at the end of the first quarter and 27 points tacked on in the second. Lots of offense for Federal Way and some pretty exciting football for one team at least. The Rams in the locker room trying to sort out their team to see if they can get on the board, slow down Federal Way. I'm not sure how they can do that. Before we get into the stats, Scott Eklund, give us some feedback on what your take is on this first half of action. Uh, what we've seen is exactly what we thought we'd see. Federal Way has a ton of athletes. I've mentioned it several times. We both kind of talked about it. Yep. A lot of athletes, a lot of speed. As soon as they started to clean up some of the penalties that they were making in the, in the very early part of the game, they just took off, and Rodgers just had no answer. Rodgers had no answer, but several folks do. Federway has a pretty good quarterback crew, but it's been spread the ball around, and you can do the game. Pretty much the running and the passing worked for Federal Way and special teams if you come down, down to it. 88 yards on the ground for Federal Way. The Eagles had 123 passing. Two touchdowns from each of their two quarterbacks. Curran coming right back after an interception, throwing a similar pass route in for a score. Let's break down the scoring for you. First for Federal Way, it was Mike Tate punching it in from 31. The one play drive to open things up. The kick was good by Kobe Craig. And then it was a quarterback getting up there to sky and get the ball, running in, kind of improvising as Elliott got six. Again, Craig converting the kick. Second kick, or the third kick was blocked after the score again by McNeil. This time it was a 68-yard run getting him in. And uh, then Curran scoring that uh, fourth touchdown, connecting up with Mike Tate for a 30-yard pass play. Kick was good this time by Craig, and this time it was Elliott coming back, scoring uh, 25 yards as a hookup with number 19, Brendan Warren. That was actually a pretty good play, pretty nice to watch. And then you've been calling his number all night long, calling his name Chico McClasher, getting a hold of the punt in his own end, Ripping it down, 64 yards officially for the score, the last touchdown of the half, and then a kick good by Kobe Craig. So lots of fireworks for the offense, but the defense pretty solid as well. What are the Rodgers Rams going to do, try to do here coming out of the locker room? Well, if you're Rodgers, you've got to come out, and we said this earlier, play and call the game like it's 0-0. Yeah. You know, just come out and say, hey, forget about that first half. We can't do anything about it. Let's just go out and play like it's 0-0 and see what we can get done. You have to figure some some positive things out for this team to get them rolling a little bit because they don't just have this game. They still have eight or nine other games that they still have to play. So you need to get these guys. You're hoping that you get out of here healthy, and you're hoping also that you can get some positive uh, momentum going, not just for the rest of this game but into the t next week's game as well. Hey, folks, you're watching PlayOnSports.com's presentation of Friday Night Football live from Federal Way here in the state of Washington. It's the Federal Way Eagles at their hometown Memorial Stadium leading 41-0 over the Rogers Rams in the South Puget Sound League South Division matchup. I'm Tom Smith alongside Scott Eklund, our color analyst here, and we want to salute our production crew as well. Um, but uh, with the Eagles leading 41-0, it's up to Rodgers in the white as both teams warm up to get things going here in the second half. We've talked about some of the other games to open up the weekend last night in Bellevue downing a Trinity team, the first state of football, state of Texas football team to travel on the road and lose a football game. And yeah. that was a serious win because it wasn't like everyone expected that win. A lot of folks are calling the game for Texas before they even had the first Yeah, and hike. The, a lot of the people that we're talking about that are people who don't know much about Bellevue football because they have taken on all comers. They they broke De La Salle's, what, 200-game winning streak uh, back in the early part of the decade. Yep. Uh, they they uh, beat Long Beach Poly one year that when, when the Jackrabbits were rated number one in the country that year and had 22 guys go to D1 schools. Uh, Trinity Euless has... They average across their offensive line 310 pounds, so you would think that there's no way that Bellevue with their you know, Bellevue isn't tiny, but they aren't that. And and they're uh, a nuanced offense. They're yeah, not they, the big boys. They really are, but it, it isn't just that. They, they they use their speed and athleticism. You have Miles Jack. You have Sean Constantine. You have uh, Bouchard, Buda Baker. You have several other guys on that team. Damian, uh, uh, Darian Freeman, uh, the the 
defensive tackle there that can really plug things up. They've got a lot of talent on that team that are going to be playing at the next level. We just need to see how they do for the rest of the season. But you can see why they've been such a dominant program. Well, someone said that you take a look at both the athletes on both sides of that particular football game, you line them up and coach them with some NFL-type quarterbacks that every game Trinity would beat Bellevue. Yeah. What they liked about Butch Gontroff as the coach, of course, was lauded in the commentary that, that you and I are talking about, but also just the way the, the athletes went about their business. They did the right things. But it wasn't until Nathan DeRyder picked off that final yeah. uh, pass that they knew they had the game won. It was a great game to watch, a 31-24 thriller, Bellevue winning in overtime. Uh, it's a great way to kick off the season. But as you mentioned, that's just one of the games that kicked off our season. I went way down to two-way, one-eye matchup between Linden and um, the Kings. Mm -hmm. Kings with a one Division I candidate who actually chose Yale over Pac-12 schools, yep. choosing to go to Yale because, like many of the athletes in our, in our uh, northwest region, these are student athletes, yeah. first and foremost. And you're talking about Mason Friedline, the offensive lineman. They also have Billy Green, who's committed to BYU, um, and uh, just a, a team loaded with some talent, but also very good student athletes, as you mentioned. Back to the game in hand. We may refer later to other games that are going on tonight and this weekend. Rodgers scoots it along, having a hard time picking up the 20-yard line. With his knee down, he is whistled down. And uh, let's credit the uh, athlete who picked it up. I didn't quite catch the number. Was that Keenan Curran on the return? Number I thought two? it was number five. Number but... five it is. Zeke Neal. So now Federal Way gets the ball first this time. Remember, it was Rodgers with the ball to start. Now Rodgers on defense, where they have had some consistent success that's again hard to say when you've got 41 points tacked up there but when you hold the team three downs and then give it up on a penalty and extend the drive or have one big play beat you on a drive uh, granted two of the drives were one play drives but you know you, you do have some good things to build on there and it looks like uh, Kern is actually going to come in and be the quarterback to start the second half he's only a uh, junior this year yep. so that they're trying to get him some reps to get him ready for the rest of this season but also for his senior season as well he's got some pretty good folks in the game right now to work with he's going with the first team the handoff up the middle initially stopped the flag coming in late but getting uh, across the 20 yard line Rogers looking to stack him up on defense Curran comes over to pick up the play while the referees do their business It will go against Rodgers. As the defense backs up, it will be uh, a five-yard procedural penalty. Face mask, so not an intentional rip your head off kind of a thing, but glazing the mask. Somebody got too much of it. It's second down and five, they say, in the scoreboard, though it looks more like seven to go. Curran. Sets his backfield. One receiver right, two on the left. Handing off. And Rodgers Rams in the backfield. Wrapping him up. Gets across the 20, but he won't go any further. It's going to be third and long. Probably 10 by the time they set things up. So lots of work needing to be done with those next level Federal players. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's why this is so important for them. To get work against a first team defensive unit in a conference game. So you know these kids are going all out. Gives them a lot of good experience for the for the coming years. You can't uh, reconstitute this in practice. It's an invaluable time. And just like in the first quarter where we had lots of the first teamers making mistakes, you can expect some mistakes to be made here. Get those out of your system. Get the coaching that you need. Number 12, Ryan Gonoiski is going to go out on the left for Curran and the Eagles. He's got two in the backfield and shotgun formation. Back with protection this time. Gets the ball out. And a good job by Moinsky to bring that one down. Splitting two defenders. Curran, pretty good job out of the quarterback position to whip that ball in there. And it looks like across the 30-yard line, they've got themselves in a position to maybe go for it here on fourth down. And Curran put that right where he needed to. Threw it right in between two defenders. Threw it up high so his, his tall receiver could go and get it and sets them up for a third and very short, third and about one. Now remember the uh, five-yard penalty for the face masking. It's uh, third down is what the marker says. So Curran resets his offense, 
sending Treshawn Narrett over to the right. So he's got one receiver left, one to the right. And in the backfield, he has to elude one trackler. And he gets across the 30 to the 35. So talk about improvisation. Kieran Kern doing a good job as he made one of the Rams miss in the backfield. That's very athletic play by Kern really right was. there. really was. You'd like to see him not hold it out there like a <laughs> loaf of bread like he did on that play. But you can't really fault his effort. Really tried to make some make a play with his legs. Had to make a decision and, and went with it and uh, got the first down. Blasting in for the Rams was Aaron McGraw, senior defensive back on a blitz. He was back there as soon as the ball was hiked, it seemed like. Showing quickness himself. But again, Curran making the move. First and 10 at the 35 for the Eagles. Slot receiver on the right again. Deep blitz. The flip is way wide. It bounces on the turf. The struggle in there for the Rams is Andrew Nelson. And it will be a Rodgers ball, according to the hand that one official is holding up. Or will Federal Way still hold possession? Wow. It still is Federal Way, a six-yard loss. And that was a haphazard move by Curran as he flipped the ball out. No one was there when he flipped it yeah. of either <laughs> team to say. But the good job by the running back to get around and cover up the ball under pressure. If you're going to make that pitch, you need to be sure about that. And I'm sure that's what the coaches will tell yeah. him when he comes off or in the film study tomorrow when they look at, it, at, at that play. Into the ball game and checking the signal is Trayvon Meadows, number 42, the left back. Curran looks left, whips it out again. There for the reception is Ryan Gnoitsky, but it is incomplete. Funny thing about that field turf, it's just like grass. If the ball hits it, it's dead. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you could see he just didn't step into that pass. He's got plenty strong arm. Yeah. And he really spins it pretty well. It's got a nice tight spiral on it. He just didn't get. He just didn't step into that one. That's the key thing. Again, when you're young and you're the athlete. In peewee ball, you can get away with moves like that. At this level, you've got to find your rhythm, find your feet, make every play fundamentally sound. And there's things at the, uh, you know, at this level that you can get away with that at the next level you can't get yeah, away exactly. with. Yeah, exactly. James Black, number 16, in for Federal Way. Out wide to the left, Sean Nared. And back is D'Angelo Williams. Spring on the left-hand side, but pressure at the backfield for Curran. Nowhere to go. Boy, there was not. That was like a bucket with no leaks. <laughs> Nowhere to go. And the Rams cheering their defensive effort, pushing the ball back to the 22-yard line. And forced to punt. Federal Way will send out Kobe Craig, who will look to receive the ball inside his own 10 at midfield and ready to return for Rodgers is LeGrant Pegram. And I know we're talking about uh, Federal Way having a, quite a few subs in there right now but good job on Rodgers just keep playing the game do what you need to do to get better Savusa sprints off Craig punts high bounces at the 45 yard line and down by number 53 Albert Havili who is again ever present in the right place at the right time and limping a little bit that's not an encouraging signing you've seen him fly around this field that'll be okay it's I'm not a doctor, but it looks like he's feeling better already. Yeah, it actually could be a cramp, too. This time of the year, that's when a lot of cramps happen. Not enough bananas earlier or other uh, vitamin D type um, so, Some of that, but usually it's just more hydration. Uh, and we're not, we're not talking about a warm night at nope. all. I mean, it's probably in the low 60s right about it's now. It's chilled down. This is yeah. perfect football weather for yeah. the first Yeah, it's great. Game. It's great. But, but, you know, some of these guys don't hydrate like they're supposed to, and... and even if it's a cool night, you can still get cramps if you don't if you haven't done what you need to do the night before. Senior quarterback Steve Van Hone alone in the backfield steps back, short drop off the shotgun, rifles it in, but it's broken up. His intended receiver was Zach Monk cutting across the middle of the field. And there we see another drop. That was pretty good defense too to it credit was. credit that. But you you're looking for a player like Zach Monk to find a way to take a decent ball yeah. and haul it in. Yeah. That's asking a lot though of a Rogers team that really hasn't shown any particular ability in that realm under pressure they've had a couple of uh, drops among open players and drops from difficult balls Van Horn is flushed tucks the ball and knocked down before he goes out of bounds 
clock will run either way, and the second down run brings up third and seven for Rodgers. And there's uh, Jared Pulu yet again pursuing him from the backside. Chasing him down from the back. Van Horn doesn't seem to be too worried in the backside. He is pretty quick for a, a tough <coughs> quarterback. Yeah, you, ca you got a feel for Van Horn. He's made some plays with his legs. He's done everything he can to keep this team alive. It's just there. Rodgers has just been completely outclassed by Federal Way so far this, this evening. They've had some middling success with the run, but they've eschewed that and left Van Horn in the backfield. Coming off is Dulu. He tucks and runs again across the 40 and finally brought down by the Eagles' Marcel Morris. I love the high school game because of the two-way aspect. Your best athletes are playing both ways, and yep. they make good plays offensively, and they make good plays defensively like the Eagles have done. But sometimes there's the opportunity to cover up for yourself when you made a bad play. Maybe you didn't catch the ball, but you can come back out, make a good play defensively. Fourth down and one to go. Ball at the 40. Rams looking over to the signal from Coach Bivon. Well, we saw that from Pegram earlier where he had a couple drops yep. but came in and made a play on defense to get the interception. Austin Harden now in the back of Van Horn. They're going to plunge up the middle with him. There they go, and there's a big space. Cuts off to the left. He has a move with the 25 at the 20. Chased from behind by Tate, and he's forced out of bounds inside the 15. So good run by Austin Harden and at the top of the broadcast. You said circle that name. He's the guy who's going to perform for Rodgers this year. Yeah, he actually finally had some running room, which he hadn't had most of the night. He found it off the left side, cut off of the, the butt of the guard, and was able to outrun Tate and uh, before he ran into Delondo Tucker. Pretty good job by the Federal Way defense. Were they on a special move of some sort to open that up, or did the Rodgers Rams collapse the right side of their defensive no, line? No, I, I think they were in a stunt, yep. and they just ran it to the right hole. You like to get that once in a while. Van Horn handing off again. Harden on the right-hand side. Try it up. Three eagles to beat, and he gets through one inside the 10-yard line. And joining Van Horn in the guts department is Austin Harden, the junior running back at 5'8", 170, playing with a lot of passion out there. And as slow as the first two quarters went, this one has had a running clock, so it's gone quite a bit faster. We're running up right on a minute left in the third quarter. Andrew Nelson gets into the lineup replacing Harden as we're 60 seconds away from the third quarter horn. Before the third quarter ends, trying to get on the scoreboard is Van Horn and the Rams. He'll give it to Andrews, but Fiddleway is in the backfield. He manages to get back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a little bit more. You're right there on the 10 yard line. And one, once, it, once again, Jared Pulu gets in there, doesn't make the play, but is able to force things inside. And Eric Afua made the tackle, 5'10, 255 pound uh, defensive lineman. Van Horn with 20 seconds on the scoreboard clock. The third down play goes into the pass. Ooh, he has an opening, but he's pressured. Hard to pass when you can't even have the time to look. Now he whips it into the corner of the end zone and unable to hold on is Trevor Merritt. And he pays the price for that one. He would have paid the price either way. Best job would have been to haul it in. And there is the horn ending the third period. And uh, Rodgers on third down, or fourth down actually coming up, will have a chance to score. But it will have to be at the other end as we will turn to the fourth period. It's still Federal Way 41, Rogers 0. You're watching PlayOnSports.com coverage of this SPSL South game. Stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com post-game show where we'll select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. High school sports lives here. I guess as we're heading into the fourth quarter, we can kind of mention some guys that we think might be worthy of, of looking at. So far, I'll take the guys who are on the downside, yeah. <laughs> if you will. Impressed to all heck with Van Horn. He's worked uphill all day, but he hasn't given up. And his body language and leadership has been in evidence. Also, you've got to say he's not had a good night. But number nine, you can see that he has the potential. He'll have a good season if he doesn't uh, waver, if he just keeps focused. And it goes... Austin Harden. Anybody else stand out for you on the Rodgers side of the ball? Honestly, you know, Austin Harden is really the only one that st stood out to me. I, Van Horn, like you said, has had a lot of bad luck with guys dropping passes, with with uh, just getting uh, pressured all night by the relentless Federal Way pass rush. 
I just don't know if I could really consider him as a guy who, <laughs> who could be a, a, you know, Harden Harden actually had the big run. He's made a couple other things, so, uh, you know, he's a guy we could look at. Van Horn on fourth down, puts it up in the corner this time, and there's definite uh, defensive interference as we saw a little shirt tug and Delano Tucker went up high, and uh, the, from the, the expression on your face, I'm guessing you didn't like that call. They're both going for the ball. I mean, it... <laughs> <laughs> you don't watch enough soccer. You yeah. didn't see that shirt tug. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, or hockey. Don't yeah. they pull the shirts on those two? Yeah, look at Delando trying to lobby the, the guy. and, and I don't you know, think he's winning that one. And, and I know that people might say, well, you're up 41 nothing. What's the big deal? Well, you still that, want to call the game. Sense of, there's yeah. a, well, but there's a sense of pride yeah. from Federal Way's standpoint. They don't want to allow a uh, touchdown in here. They don't want to allow any score. They want to shut this out. Well, when we begin to talk about the player of the game, Delonda Tucker's got to be in the conversation. Yeah. But let's remember, there were three or four or five names we mentioned coming in. So they have to perform up to expectations. Yeah. And then they have to do something special above that. And the person who has exceeded my uh, thoughts on what he could do was uh, Evan Elliott. Yeah. He had the touchdown run early. He had the 24-yard touchdown. And he managed the game really well. And I, and I think that's something that you, re you, you talk, really talk, have to look Spoken at. like a true potential coach there managing the game <laughs> a lot of coaches up for that van horn fakes the hand up runs it himself across the five dives at the three but he won't get in and he gets to the one yard line van horn showing a lot of guts out there turns and gets the play and it will be second down now, also don't forget, we're talking about players who are playing both sides of the ball, Delando Tucker yeah. being one of those. But we mentioned Tate's name both sides of the ball a couple of times. Tate has made a couple of special teams plays, too. He, does, he doesn't just play offense. He doesn't just play defense. He also plays special teams. And on the coverage units. Chico McClatcher really not heralded. He was way down the list. But he is somebody I know you have a lot of high regard for. And he made a couple of big plays, including... That final touchdown run on oh. the punt return for 64 yards. And you can just see the explosiveness. It just oozes off, from, off of him. He's so small, you, you're not quite sure what kind of a football player he is. But one thing that you need to keep an eye on with him, and as he develops, he, he really tries to use his quickness and, and make moves in the open field when really what he needs to do is just put his head down and go. Because when that guy get, gets the opportunity to get in open space, he's, he's electric. One thing I like about that punt return, it was a team return because he got the ball individually, he did the right things. He collected it and secured it. But he also had the blocking around yeah. him, and he made his way through that, and then he opened up. He created the space after that. Yeah. So it's an individual effort, but it's also a team effort yeah. on that touchdown. And everything that's done in football is a team effort. I mean, you, you, that's the way you really have to but look at it. But you know as well yeah. as I do, there are outstanding players yeah. who will step outside the concept of the team and even sometimes succeed at doing that. Yeah. But it, it ultimately hurts the team and hurts the player not yeah. to be able to do it within the construct. I gotcha. There's a well, balance of creativity and also following the team effort. Another player that I think we have to look at for being being a, oh, I think we're going to go We're going to go on a down, second down and goal to goal from the one. Van Horn under center now grabs the ball. Defense is tight. He'll take a step back and try to power it through. No signal yet. And, yes, there's a late flag but a touchdown signal with 10-11 on the board. Have the Rodgers secured some points they can put up on the board, or is there a penalty against the Rams? No, I think this might be against Federal Way. You can't uh, hit somebody away from the play. Ah. That's a new rule that they've kind of instituted. Actually, it looks like they're pointing the other way. Might be a block away. by the Rodgers man away from the, uh, away from the play. So, personal yep. foul, and it will go against Rodgers. And, boy, when you're one yard away, that's a big foul. It's no half the distance yeah. to the goal. Which I guess is a good thing, right? <laughs> and they just scored a touchdown. Because, I mean, that's that's a silly play. It, it, it eliminated the chance for your team to actually get, avoid a shutout. Did the infraction come after the ball was scored? I don't. Be hard to say. Obviously not because the. Oh, they are going to still give it to him. So it was after the score. Okay. So they put the six up on the board. They'll tack on the personal foul yardage at the kickoff. The extra point will be from the three-yard line. Another player I wanted to mention real quick is uh, Jared Pulu. He There's a lot of those guys, yeah. and Pulu would lead the way. As Rodgers gets set to convert the extra point, it's uh, Andrew Luter to attempt the kick. 
Ball spotted at the 10. The kick is up. And it's good. So it's 41 for the Eagles. The Rams have seven, and you can hear the student body get behind that one. So let's talk a bit about this line, because we've had not just two, we've had a lot of outstanding play by the big, big uglies between yeah. the tackles. Yeah, and, and JT Tiuli is a guy who, who really was stout in the middle and, and yep. didn't allow a lot of things to happen in, in the middle. But he also created some defensive plays. He did. You, you don't, he doesn't put up a bunch of stats just because his job is to more occupy blockers. But then you see guys like Albert Havili, Rod Jones Jr., Jared Pulu, those guys all – uh, you know, able to make plays to get pressure on the quarterback to run around and, and fly to the ball. Part of that's because of a guy like JTT. Really. And Jared Pulu, you led the way in discussing him, Albert Havili, making big plays. But then you also mentioned somebody who made plays on both sides. Rod Jones Jr. did a good job yep. offensively, but then he came in and he packed some wood and some hits there for yeah. a federal way. Got a key first down in one of their late drives on uh, fourth and one, was able to go over the right side and get six yards. Now, uh, you're noticing something on the field, folks, in our cameras. It's kind of like when you play yard ball. When we score, we get to stay at the end, and you have to go the other yeah. way. <laughs> Only the game officials say, no, it's not played that way in high school football. So Rodgers will come back to their end of the field to receive, and uh, the officials get to chuckle among themselves on that one. Keep going. I just wanted to no, point that out, okay. Scott. It's little okay. wrinkle here. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's something that some of these kids don't aren't used to that either. I don't know if you saw the uh, – uh, Gosh, I can't remember. I Last night's highlight of yeah, the guy running the other yeah, way. <laughs> the and, the, and the guy making the – oh, Kent State versus Towson. There was so much to, yeah. in that particular play yeah. we should allude to, well, yes. Well, the guy the – Kent State – or Towson muffs the punt. The guy picks it up and runs the wrong way, kind of does a Jim Marshall, if you remember that one. From many years ago. And then the Towson player, instead of letting him go so they can get a safety out of it. Federal way trying to handle the pit all the way back. Federal way is – Zeke McNeil has to make up yardage. Could he break this one? He breaks it with the 40. He's at the 50. He's got a blocker ahead of him, Morris. One guy to beat. He will go on. He drops the ball. Oh, my goodness. Now talk about a ton of stuff in one play. He will not live that one down until he can uh, get through practice next week. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And it will be a Rodgers ball. I'm not sure I've seen that one. No. You talk about dropping the loaf of bread, and we have wow. an official who looks like he's moving kind of gingerly as well. Yeah, he looked like he sprained something on his May way down. May have pulled a hammy trying to track down Zach Neal just sprinting down. Well, let's describe this play before we get into <laughs> Zach Townsend's, uh, Townsend State's uh, wrong way Marshall play. Why right, they're going to mark the ball at the 12-yard uh, line. He dropped the ball at the 10, but originally picked up the ball at the, about the 20-yard line, went all the way back. Circled around and got some great blocks. He's about to score the touchdown. And all of a sudden, why is he even looking back? The ball had fallen out. Oh, wow. Carrying it like a loaf of bread. Yeah. That's something that uh, luckily they're up by 34 points. You want to make so, a mistake then. Yeah. <laughs> if Especially you're going to make a mistake. you've made some good things happen. I tell you what, as being someone who has made a mistake, maybe not of that caliber, but you know, has made a mistake in practice or in a game, and then the coaches, oh, boy. It is not fun to get in the film session with well, them. Well, the thing is, you get to deal with the coaches, but what about your teammates? You oh, I know. Did let you forget that? Oh, no. And guess what? First day of school. You know what's going to be happening. He's going to be carrying his books, and he's going to be carrying a football yeah. in the other arm. Well, you know what will happen is somebody will super glue the ball. <laughs> that hurts, by the way. Yeah, it does. You let it get too fast. <laughs> well, there's a timeout on the field with 841. It's 41 to 7. <laughs> you like numbers? It was 14-0 at the first quarter. Flip those numbers, 41-0 at the half. And the only scoring in the second half by Rodgers, who have come out with a sense of purpose, done some good things defensively, and more importantly, put together a scoring drive. Admittedly, it was a ragged drive, especially some of those penalties and odd calls. And then Federal Way, as if they lost concentration, took a golden opportunity for a great return and muffed it. Yeah, and, and the, the thing is, as we've said before, the only reason that that uh, Federal Way even was, we were hesitant to say this could end up being a blowout was because of mistakes that Federal Way had made. Right here, it's another miscue. They're, they're up. And you know they're going to play that second and yeah. third level, and those kids need a chance to make a mistake. And we failed to finish up the story we'll get back to of the wrong way play in the highlight last. A long heave, and a 
good defensive play, almost thinking like he was going to bring it down was Chico McClatcher on that long haul pass. And that was a sophomore who was in on that, uh, pressuring the quarterback, Robert Savusa, 5'11", 240-pound defensive lineman who helped the quarterback up. It was good sportsmanship, but uh, really hammered the Van Horn really right laid him out. it. Van Horn, not the type to uh, so, make any excuses. So back to the Kansas State thing. Towson, Kansas State punts to Towson. Towson muff the, muffs the punt. The Kansas State guy picks it up and accidentally runs the wrong way back toward there. And instead of letting it be a safety. And the ball is picked off in the middle, zipping it down on the right-hand side. It's picked off by Brandon Warren. So he's got a touchdown to his credit, and he's got an INT. Yeah. And he comes out with the eagle wave and gets the big hug. So, And that's just something you don't want to see is the quick change. You don't want to give it right back. But unfortunately, well, Van Horn was trying to just do a little too much and, and made, didn't make the play. But anyway, just to finish it off, Towson, instead of letting him go in for a safety, decides to tackle him. They had a whole bunch of people tackling yeah. him. And we're talking amongst <laughs> each other. <laughs> it's just it's funny to watch stuff like that. Fortunately for the... Uh, the K-State and Townsend players, the ball was muffed and there wasn't the, the ability to, re, to yeah. advance the ball on the punt, so it goes back to the original spot. Yeah. But that is footage that you'll probably see more than once on uh, Sports Center this weekend and, and throughout the season. bloopers. And the bloopers reel. Yeah. Okay, so Federal Way with the ball. Curran back in the shotgun. Holds it out. Pressure by the Rams. He ducks it and runs. And he battles through. And the ball is loose again. And the Rams have it. So... <laughs> three straight plays, three straight turnovers. It's been a wild night, and uh, stay tuned, folks, as this game with 6.41 left in the fourth and final period, attempting to cover every aspect of football within one game. <laughs> I guess. We haven't had onside kicks yet. We haven't had a safety, but we've had a lot of turnovers, a lot of mistakes, as well as some outstanding plays. Yeah, some big plays, too. And some super big plays. Yeah. I, I, I think for my money... Even though he did have the miscue down here, I'm very much leaning towards Zach McNeil as my player of the, of the game. Now, if you're his press officer, you're already coaching him, and, like, you know, I didn't want to run it up against the Rams. So I was yeah. thinking of a way to get a lot of yards but not, you know, sting yeah. him too bad. I mean, he's, he's, he's looking at over 200 yards of total offense tonight with the returns and, and uh, rushing the ball. And he has that one big touchdown run. I think, I think he's the guy that I'm looking at pretty closely. as the Okay, folks, game. mark that down. We've got a few more minutes to make a decision in this game. Van Horn, a candidate for the Rams, wings it out here. It's collected by Kobe Craig, the punter, who's been in the uh, receiving core also tonight. And he did a good job coming back to secure the ball, which has been an, an important issue for Van Horn passes, and then circling around and getting yardage. So he drove away the defensive back, who clearly is playing a more conservative style right now. Yeah, and, and you're talking about backups right now. I don't think I see one person in there. Well, Treshawn Nair, number 23, has been in the ball game. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, a lot of Pretty backs much all the subs. defense. Yeah. Van Horn now on second down and short. Wings out to the right-hand side and dropping the ball on another beautifully thrown pass by Stephen Van Horn. And his receiving core, well, this is the guy you want to get on the same page with. Number nine, LeGrant Pegram. And if I'm the Coach Bowen side of things, he maybe not fumbled the ball, but you need to get find a way for him to yeah. collect the ball. He's getting some decent passes out there. Yeah, he's he's thrown the ball relatively well. I liked him in warm-ups. I liked the way he, he uh, directed things, but it just, it just hasn't clicked tonight for whatever reason. Third and short with Harden in the backfield. They need that yard to keep the drive alive. To Van Horn, and there's some movement by Federal Way. Number 65, Devin Isaacs, the senior defensive lineman, will give the five yards, and Rodgers will keep it live. So let's take a look again from your career. You and I both played at, at the various levels, high school and college. How do you handle it with a player so he gets the message and learns, but you don't burn him, you don't send him away? These are tough guys, I know, but they're also young kids, so there's a proper way to go about it. Yeah, are you talking about the receivers For dropping example, the ball? For example, yeah, with uh, LeGrant Pegram Pegram, leading yeah. away in yeah. that category. I, I, I think that's just a situation where you get him on a jugs machine, you know, the ball machine uh, after practice, you know, during the week. Uh, Van Horn incomplete you, you down the left-hand side. You also bring him in and you, say, you just say to him, look, we believe in you. We know you had a tough night. Forget about that game. Let's come in and work. 
let's let's prepare you for what you're supposed to do. We believe in you, and we're going to keep throwing the ball your way. We know that you can make plays for us. And, and honestly, that's all the kids want to hear. So they, they just you burn know. their ears just enough, but then also you yeah. treat it like, hey, it's a matter of fact thing. It happens. Here's what we're going to do. Yeah. And matter of fact. You also say, look, look, we need you to make these plays. Van Horn is back, looks on the right-hand side, throws in the flat short this time. Intended receiver was Kyler Uli, yeah. the sophomore wide and, receiver. And, and you, say, you say to him, we expect you to make these plays. And that means we think you can make these plays. It isn't, it isn't like we don't think you can. So what do we need to do to get you more confident, have more confidence in making the plays? And, and that's just going to be a big thing of him getting on the jug machine and just catching the passes and, and reeling them in. For me, that's the aspect of the game that is a part of the teaching lab. It's part of the school. It's teachable moments. And it's why sports in general and football in particular, because when you go out in the world and work in an organization, you're going to make some mistakes. Yeah. Now, are you going to... Are you going to be mature about it in terms of accepting the mistake, looking for a way to provide a solution? And now, if you're a boss of somebody, you don't want to send away an employee. You want to find a way to take what they have to offer and mold them into a member of your team, just like in a sporting field. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, these kids, you got to also remember that these kids have a lot on their minds. They've got football on their minds. They've got school. They've Who knows got all what's the, happening at home. At home. They've got, they, some of them might have jobs. You know, I mean, it's, there's a lot going on. So you can't. You just can't lay into a kid and, and destroy him for the rest. This is the opening game of the season. There's a long way to go. Rodgers always puts out a good team. He needs to be there to help them recover. Exactly. And let's not forget there's something very significant on their minds. is a young man uh, that died. You could see the student body loved this man and connected. Number 32, Topi Akinlasoto. And we've not given you his last name, so I'm... I'm giving yeah. that once now. I'm not <laughs> sure I pronounced it correctly. But that is something that when the, you got the game in hand 41-7, to seven, there's where the lack of concentration can come in. All of a sudden, those thoughts, whatever they may be, and that's what you've got to learn to do. Fake by Van Horn. No option on the left. He goes to the right. Alls downfield. Wide open. Again, he goes back. And it's collected by Kyler Uli, who makes the moves, breaks the tackles, in for a score, and the Rams section goes wild, scoring a touchdown for Rodgers. Big play. That's something that you wish you could have gotten in the second half, or in the second quarter. Uh, but, you know, he just breaks open the, the cornerback who, who hasn't played a lot, probably is, is more of a sub, sat on the route, broke down too late, put his eyes in the backfield, and, and Tiuli just ran just right by him. So there's a sophomore that Coach Bowen's crew holds in high regard. He dropped the ball there. The ball was short. He came back and makes the play, and they go to him deep. And guess what? That's the longest scoring play of the evening of special teams or any sort. That's a 72-yard bomb from Van Horn to Uli. And they have a chance to tack it from 13 to 14 on this extra point attempt. So good job by Rodgers so far. Can they keep on the run here? And what you have to what you have to love is for Kyler Uli, he this that's probably one of his first this is probably his first varsity game. He's only a sophomore. Certainly the first one of the year. I mean, how memorable is that for you? Exactly. And how much confidence to come right back to you and have your quarterback haul it downfield and you make the play. You catch the ball, you make the move, kick it up. And it's good. So it's 14 in the board. And there's your number switch. 41 on one side for Federal Way. 14 for the Rogers Rams. And uh, the run out sometimes can be fun. Yeah. The mercy roll makes it a little bit shorter. But also you have a chance to see a Rogers squad get some things right. This Van Horn reminds me of the quarterback for Evans Woodway last year who graduated. Yeah. Outstanding athlete in his own mm -hmm. right. Help me with the name now. I've just lost it. <laughs> yeah. A you're, really you're good making kid. Me space on it. Sorry too. about Thanks that. Thanks a lot. Yeah, my fault. <laughs> you put the me old on announcers the spot. jinx. But they have the similar feel yeah. that Evans Woodway team. A sense that there's something there. And of course, in the deep and long uh, mm -hmm. conferences of the SPSL, you may not see a much of a postseason. But um, and I guess that's an advantage of the West Coast. You've always got your one and two team, but that third and fourth has a shot yep. at doing something, no matter what the sport. And it's good to see the efforts of Van Horn rewarded with that long touchdown bomb. That'll help his numbers some. Drops or no drops. Two back at the 15-yard line, anticipating the kick. It's scooted along to the 20-yard line. 
picked up. Shake and bake moves, trying to get some speed. That's what you're looking for. And uh, Zeke McNeil for Federal Way gets a 22-yard return. So the Eagles in pretty good field position again here in this football game. Two and a half minutes, less than two and a half minutes remain. Boy, things are going fast. Yes, <laughs> they are. Those running clocks really do help the announcers, but <laughs> also just it also helps just to keep the scores down. You don't want kids going, going home, no. having to put up with being shut out 80 to nothing by a team. I mean, that's, you don't need that. Absolutely. So now getting some more reps. Number two, the junior quarterback, Keenan Curran. He's got a lot going for him in this game. Touchdown. Ryan Gnoinski going left. Has, has thrown a pick and has fumbled the ball, though, too. So yep. something so he needs to keep an eye on. Plenty of experience. And a, were they drawn or were they jumped? Was it the Rodgers no, I Rams? Think I think they're just, they're just saying they take a knee. Ah, there we go. Take the loss. No flags on the play. Second and long, and the clock continuing to wind down at 123. I think some of these fans should start to head out to their cars so that we aren't stuck in the parking lot. This <laughs> is not a great parking lot to try and hey, get out of. Scott, don't be in a hurry. we got the post-game show I coming know, up. I know. And I should probably <laughs> make sure that I made all the proper announcements as we wind up the game. <coughs> Kiernan with a minute left, takes the knee. You want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying right now tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Playonsports.com slash SBP. Folks, you can also follow Play On Sports on Facebook and Twitter giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play On Sports on both fa Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for your high school sports, playonsports.com. And taking the knee, they count it down from 10 to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And Federal Way gets to celebrate the opening game victory here at their Memorial Stadium, downing the Rogers Rams by a score of 41 to 14. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to stay tuned to play on sports.com for our post-game coverage. We'll wrap up all the action in our post-game show, and we'll have an interview with our player of the game. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I don't today. think so. <laughs> That's coming up in just a few moments as we sign off on the broadcast tonight. Alongside Scott Eckland, this is Tom Smith. Thanks for watching Play On Sports coverage as the Federal Way Eagles down the Rogers Rams by a score of 41 to 14.